a deep inhale in. Let's exhale and release the hands. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Continue. Good. Exhale and folding forward. Strong, strong backs. Good. Excellent. Remember, this is not a competition, although you two seem to be the best in the class. Excellent. Perfect form. You two. Perfect. Coming up into downward facing dog. Okay. Good. It's really important in this pose that you arch your back and keep it flat at the same time. I feel like those are opposing ideas. No, they're not because you're arching your back up while it's flat. Good, yes, yeah, sweat it out. Sweat out all the toxins from this morning. Come on, lady. My name is Prana, and I know that wasn't just juice. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Nick the Rat Radio, episode 203. Uh, uh, 303? What, what episode is it? 302? Something? I'm not good with numbers very, very, very much. Uh, but I do know that it's Wednesday night at 11 p.m. and we're uh, live in the sewers of Brooklyn, New York. Uh, tonight's show is going to be very interesting and a little bit different. So we're changing the format around because we would like to uh, have as much conversation time as possible. Because tonight, tonight we have Chicky Hot. Now you're like Chicky Hot, really? The owner of the North American Psychic and Paranormal Network? Yes. Yes, we have her. She's also a, a, a life coach. I've been uh, I've been trying to see if she could help me out, but, but I, she, I think she might think that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm way past help. Uh, so let's just let's just start talking to her right now. Uh, Chicky, Chicky, are you there? Hello. Hello, Nick. How are you? I am. I am pretty decent. I'm having a good time in the sewer. And I'm going to have a beer in honor of you being here. Have a beer. As a matter of fact, have another beer. Uh, well, that didn't have much head, so this is not going to be a very good beer. It's one of those weird flavored ones. Ugh. All right. So, so when you go and you, you burp, we'll vote on it, okay? <laughs> we'll see how much bass you can get out of it, okay? Uh, you know, I only burp sometimes. <laughs> huh? So It's all good. <laughs> I have the first question I'd like to ask of uh, the great Chicky Hot right here is: Am I pronouncing your last name right? Yeah, Chicky Hot. H A U T E. Okay, because I, I was I was worried that I, I'd I'd, uh, I'd uh, uh, upset you right off the bat of the show, but thank God I didn't. Nah. No, it, it it's the French thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you. <laughs> You are the um, uh, North American Psychic and Paranormal Network owner. Do you have you had a paranormal experience yourself? Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? We're we're getting some some feedback here saying people are saying that I'm kind of roboting at the moment. Oh no, uh, my voice is kind of robotic. Give me one sec. I, I'm gonna. Um, I think I'm going to have to be able to disconnect from my connection for a quick second. That's okay. And uh, yeah, I don't know and, if it's you or me. It might be. Give me ten. Give me ten seconds. Okay, we're going to give uh, Chicky Chicky uh, ten seconds. If she's not back by then, I'm going to have another beer. Uh, let me just give you a quick review of this beer. It's a uh, Death by Coconut uh, Oscar Blues. All right, I'm back. I could I could try something as well because it might be on my side. Okay. All see. right. If we, if you go out and you go back, come back in again. You have the password already. So yeah. <laughs> I got the password. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Here. Hopefully, hopefully everybody can hear me better now. It's it sounds about the same to me. So I don't know if it's because of uh, me or let's let me just try to change this over here. Yeah. It could be the the Jitsi too. So. Could be Jitsi. It uh, could be. Is it the mean like that? All right, let's try. This is. Oh, wait, that's the test. All right. Well, if, if... it's it's okay. Uh, either way. Uh, hold. Whoa, whoa. Where's where am I? Um, uh, voice mirror. <laughs> These buttons over here. There we go. Oh, hello. Hi. 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 Right. It's 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 not that bad, if anything. So they're just going to have to deal with it. It's just a little, it gets a little bit robotic if, uh, I don't know. 
Okay. All right. Well, I, I did my part. <laughs> you did, and I could hear you fine. <laughs> So it's okay. okay. Fabulous. That's all that. All right. So anyway, so you were going to hit me up with some questions. Yes, I would. I would like to know about uh, a, a paranormal experience that you had yourself. A uh, paranormal experience that I had myself. Okay, I had a lot of them. So uh, I'll tell you a story that dates back to 1997, when my beloved mother was on her deathbed. And my mother had always been a, a Catholic girl. You know, she always, you know, kept her, uh, you know, St. Anthony's. She kept the cross. She, she had, you know, uh, everything. You know, she was a good girl. So it was very interesting because on her deathbed, she was hooked up to a ventilator and she couldn't really speak. She couldn't go anywhere. She couldn't do anything. She, her body was riddled with cancer. Oh, God. And yeah, it, it was it was profound to say the very least. And you know, again, this all happened in you know lovely New York City. So anyway, um, I was in my home in Rockaway Beach, Queens, New York, and uh, you know, I had said to my mother, you know, the last time I had seen her, because I knew she was going to pass, I had said to her, "Look, I'm going to teach you how to be able to out of body, okay? But you need to trust me." So uh, being an energy worker and being that I have some capability <laughs> to be able to kind of spiritually guide people, I walked her through the process on how to out a body. So she got the hang of it. And I said, well, listen, I'm giving, um, I'm giving you a big task. Yeah. And I said to her, I don't want to hear from any nurses or doctors when you decide to leave your body. And I want you to be able to give me the news because of what I've just taught you. And I want to prove that there is afterlife. I want to prove this because I know for a fact that there is. But I, I, I want to do an experiment where you play with me on this one. And she squeezed my hand. I'm like, okay, good, let's do this. So sure enough, it was uh, December, oh, jinkies, uh, <laughs> December 18th, 1997. Um, it was slightly after midnight on the 18th. And I was on the phone with one of my buddies. I go, and uh, at the time, I was on a landline, because remember, that's 1997, right? So, I mean, we all had cell phones and stuff like that back then, you know, but still, landlines were still a thing. We had many uh, extensions throughout the house. So I was on the phone with one of my buddies, and slightly after midnight, I get a phone call. And I hear the call waiting beep in. Yeah. Now, you guys remember, okay, call waiting, when you're on a landline, it, it, it just beeps. That's it? <laughs> it just... Okay. Uh, uh, just Chicky, can I, can I ask you, uh, uh, before you continue, uh, maybe you could try to, um, I know it's, it's not the best, but would you be able to call me on the, uh, via the phone line? It's, uh, because sure. it, I... is, it, is, uh, it is staticking a little bit. Uh, people are reporting that it's... Uh, it's staticking. Okay. All right. Uh, would, <laughs> okay. Is it would that uh, be? Me, would you be able to be willing to try that out? Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Right, I'll, I'll uh, post the me... the phone number in here. All right. It, we'll just we'll see if this works a little bit better because uh, people in the audience they're they're saying that uh, they got crappy ears. All right, not a problem. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, it's uh, it's over modulating <laughs> over Jitsi a little bit. In e yeah, either that or if you want to call me on Skype, we could do it that way too. Uh, we could we could try Skype if you'd like. Yeah, I don't right. know because if we go by if we do it by the phone, I mean, it, okay. you're gonna hear a lot of tinny tin tin stuff. But that I can do that. I can call you on we the could, phone line. We could try. Well, All do you right. want to try Skype first? Uh, wait, let me sign into Skype. Bear Perfect. with me one second here. We're, we're doing this live, people. This is how, um, this is how trained professionals, uh, do it in the industry. They... <laughs> it was working good for us. It's, it's when everybody else started to be able to, to jump on that everybody else was like, wait, well, let's blame everybody. Let's blame the audience. What do you think? I, you know what? <laughs> Screw these guys out there in the audience. It's it's probably my system because I think I got like thirty audio lines all tangled up. It's probably me, but let's let's just uh, yeah, we could try stuff out and see what happens. Uh, let me yeah, just change my settings because you've used Skype in the past with luck, right? Have you had luck with Skype? Oh no, really? definitely not. Never had. <laughs> really? 
Skype has always been a, a big old. Uh, let's try it out. We could. Uh, okay, I'm gonna put this here, and then the speakers is gonna be coming through the default. Okay. Yeah. I'm going into my my preferences here and setting up my my settings here. Oh man, I, a, I'm so upset that I'm interrupting this story too because it's so. I was on the edge of my seat. Right. I was like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> yeah, Skype is Skype is definitely. Oh, you know, it, it's it's having me do something very strange here. <laughs> it's another paranormal okay. experience. It's, it, is it, it, so it is beyond paranormal. <laughs> it, it's a kick in the patootie, is what it is. Um, I think I have Skype on my computer. I think. I'm looking because I tried to be able to sign into it from my browser and it's being an animal. I, I can't tell you what kind of animal it is, but it's being an animal. It's not, it's not being a rat. It, it looks like I've removed are... No, it's not being a rat. We have one rat present and that's a good rat. Cheers to that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I am going to be able to try to call you because this is ridiculous. <laughs> We're, 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 we're just going to do it by phone and uh, we'll, we'll do our best. Let's yeah, see how that, let's see how that uh, works. If it, if it, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just try it out. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. Well, you know, what? I'm going to get onto my phone. I just got to put my headphones in. That's, that's all I got to do. I got to switch from one set of headphones to another set of headphones and, uh, and hope that that connects in and doesn't disconnect. We'll see what happens. Because you sound you every now and then it's really good, and then sometimes uh, it does overmodulate. I don't know. I don't know if I could change those settings in Jitsi anywhere. I don't think so. Oh. Probably not. There's probably something weird going on. Um, I'm trying to connect my headphones right now to my phone so I can be able to call you. And uh, <laughs> now my headphones don't want to work. You know, what? I blame Mercury retrograde. That's what this is all about. This is Mercury retrograde. How could, can we protect ourselves from Mercury retrograde in any way? Um, we can kick and ban Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put on those high-heeled boots and drop kick it. Exactly, exactly. Shanghai style, right? Heck yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to try to call you now on here. Uh, 91... 917-719-5923. Got it. Okay, we're dialing you. All right, let's see what happens here. All right, I hear it coming in. Hello, caller. Hello, hello. hello. Oh, wait, I got you coming through here, too. Let me mute this, and then we'll do a... Oh, hi. Hi. Can you hear me better now? <laughs> All right, let's have a vote from the audience. Uh, would you rather the the Jitsi or the phone call? Yeah, which is which is better, guys? Hopefully, you can be able to hear me okay. Oh, I can I can hear you actually pretty well through here. Yeah, I could raise you up, and and through this one, I could uh, actually give you a little bit more. I can make you less tinny too. All right, uh, get, can you can you say the following sentence? Um, I I like mayonnaise on my sandwiches. I don't know why. I like mayonnaise on the sandwiches. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, there's there's people. I think I think that they like the phone line. I think they're into the the phone line. All right, that's fine. Okay, that's good. All right, as long as they can hear me, then I shall continue with my story where I left off. Yes. This is yeah. This this works. This works pretty well because there's less modulation. Uh, please, please continue. With okay. So anyway, I it was after. Okay, I, I'm jumping out of this other thing here. Okay, so it was after midnight, and I had gone and uh, was on the phone with one of my buddies, and you know the call waiting beeps in, and oddly enough, it, it was the strangest. Thing. Every when I heard the call waiting. Now, if you guys remember the old school landlines, okay? Yeah. Phones don't ring loud when you have call waiting. This is it true. It only beeps. Every single extension in my house, I had three extensions. Every single extension rang loud. 
and that was the only time that ever happened. When I beeped over, when I clicked over to be able to pick up the other line, I knew who it was. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I ended up picking up the line, and they said, your mother just expired. And I was, I was like, all right. <sighs> So, uh, how do you explain that? How how do you how do you explain that? But how did you feel? Did did it scare you, or were were you like this is like a like a like a very good thing, or like it was a that's I would have been uh, crying my butt off. I, that's all I know. <laughs> I, I well, it was actually quite interesting because the backstory was that uh, the um, EMT that originally took my mother to the hospital back in September from the uh, apartment that she was in, yeah. okay? I was very interested to find out who this dude was. And I guess yeah, I found him attractive or whatever. So I went and I asked a number of my firefighter and EMT friends and, you know, I guess uh, all the people that I knew out in the Rockaways. I'm like, who is this dude? So finally, he and I had the chance to be able to talk for the first time on the phone, right? That same night, that's who I was on the phone with that evening. We were speaking for the very first time. It was so funny. And sure enough, when I clicked back over to the guy, I was like, well, my mom just died. Can you give me a ride? <sighs> and he was like, yeah, sure. And that was our first date. <laughs> 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 well, it's uh, I guess something uh, good things could come out of there. Uh, I hope I hope that went well. Friend in the past. <laughs> yeah, no, it did. It did. It's very sweet gentleman. Very very sweet gentleman. So yeah, definitely some interesting stuff. Uh, that was that was like I would have to say one of the more profound uh, paranormal experiences that I've ever had. And not to mention, you know, not even so much about, you know, the, the divine timing of who I was on the phone with at yeah. the time, but uh, also the other very interesting thing about all of this is that my mother's body was done, but she had like, oh, oh man, she, she wielded the will <laughs> of an angel. She didn't want to let go. She, you know, she was like, no, 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 I really want to go home. I want to continue my life. I don't want to let go. She really didn't. And it was interesting because um, I had to tell her, like, look, your body's done. You, you, that you can't, there's nothing you can do. Your kidneys are given out. You know, you've got edema and everything. So I said to her, look, you have to let go. And I, I taught her what she needed to know. And we had a um, chaplain come at the hospital and administer last rites. Oh. And I'll tell all of you out there that are listening within the sound of my voice that God forbid, you know, come the day that you've got a loved one who is, you know, coming to their time, so to speak, to word it ever so gently. And you know that they're having a difficult time with meeting their makers, so to speak, as well. I will tell you to encourage them to receive their, their last rites or to be able to have what's called pastoral care. Yeah. Because uh, having that comfort of someone who is clergy there to be able to talk to them. They, we know how to bring peace. And I too am clergy. So being that the case, it's, um, it's important to, to keep that in mind, to be able to bring somebody peace during their final hours. And it was just a matter of maybe, I don't know, I guess 12, 13 hours or something like that after uh, I had the uh, chaplain come in and be able to, you know, do the last rites and such that she was able to let go. But uh, somebody who I know who is also, I think they were Presbyterian, you know, I, I, they, they too are dealing with a, a parent who is very old and very sick and they are very uh, frail and they're ready to let go. They're done. So I said, look, you know, have clergy come in and meet with them. It doesn't necessarily need to be last rites because last rites is only done in some religions, but at least ha let them sit down with clergy. Let them receive that pastoral care and let them at least talk to somebody, get whatever they need to say off their chest and almost give, give them permission to enter the kingdom of heaven as that's what they may see. You know, because that's where they think they're going, then let them believe. But there's so many belief systems out there, Nick. There really are. That's true. The, are there clergy for every belief system? Or 
Just about. Yeah, <laughs> just about. There, you're you're going to have clerics or you're going to have uh, clergy or, you know, all different, you know, types of clergy persons. Even um, in Buddhism, we have monks, mm. you know, so, it, yeah. Well, I think for for when when I'm going, it's going to be much more like uh, because when animals they, they usually when they pass, they usually like try to get alone and hide off or something. Mm-hmm. That's why you never see any like dead squirrels or pigeons outside usually because they're always you, you just you wind up smelling yeah. them and you don't really see them. But that's you yeah. to have a to have a daughter at your side like that. You're that's that's great to because I would be. Uh, I freak out around like death and stuff, and I'm probably not the best person to to probably. I'll just be like, "Oh my god, I don't know what's going on." But to have somebody there that's that's stable and calm, and can kind of help you get to where you're going, that's that's a blessing right there. That's that's great. Thank you, thank you. Well, you know, I think that it's uh, you need to have somebody stable and calm. Uh, it's uh, definitely important to be able to have somebody there who is not a hot mess and having somebody who can be able to keep it together, uh, who, who's not necessarily attached to the situation like clergy. This is why we have pastoral care. Uh, makes it, I, I guess, a lot easier on the family so everybody can grieve properly rather than I need to stay strong because it's it's, it's part of our existence. It's part of the circle of life. We're going to come into the world and eventually we're going to leave this world. It's what it is. But where we go after that, you can bet you're bippy that there's going to be something when you leave your body. Um, uh, are you, do you believe in, in um, ghosts, like uh, spirits st- sticking around after they're gone? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, uh, uh, I, I would say a matter of hours after I woke up the very next day, I had to be able to go and make arrangements for my mother's funeral and such. And I can be able to say again with the same situation, uh, dating back to, what, 1997, Mm. that she didn't leave a will. There was no money to be able to give her a proper, you know, or, or a big fancy casket and all this burial stuff, you know, what just, you know, she came from a poor end. Even, even a non-fancy one are expensive what? as heck. Like, you, you try oh, to... Oh, yeah, definitely. It's like, does Ikea sell coffins, please? I know, seriously. It's not It's not something easy. It's a very expensive process, tens of thousands of dollars. And there wasn't enough money to be able to manage the situation. So... Unfortunately, I had to make arrangements with a funeral home and we had to have her cremated. So she she blew a gasket because she was saying, you know, she stayed at my side and she didn't know where to go or what to do. So um, I went ahead and I started to make these arrangements on the phone and start being able to make everything happen. And books started to fly off of my bookcase at me. Uh oh. <laughs> oh is, yeah. Is that she like a, a don't do this type of book throwing? Yeah, she was trying to be able to get my attention, and she was like, "Oh hell no!" <laughs> I was like, "Yo, baby, if you got ten thousand dollars that I don't know about, then you know you better produce it. You better be able to make something super paranormal happen right now because hey, I don't got ten grand. I'm sorry, you know, you know, two, five grand. Okay, whatever, we can do that." But ten grand, baby, I I I don't got that kind of cabbage. I'm sorry. Were were one of the <laughs> books, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, or whatever? <laughs> it's the only... Yeah, seriously, seriously. Now they had gone their separate ways, so uh. who knows, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, it was quite interesting to be able to experience it, and I didn't take it personally. I I didn't want to uh, push the envelope, you know, and just you know start anything. I was like, you need to accept it. That this is an out of control situation for everybody. And what are you supposed to do with your flesh bag? <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I I think that we we have there should be more options. I don't think there's many options in the whole uh, fun- funeral business. It's kind of it's kind of like a they 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 corporatized uh, the death process almost in my opinion. It's it's a little weird. Yeah. But, yeah, um, definitely. But um, it's hard to deal with know, too. It, 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 
in New York City, if you remember, right, um, back in the beginning of COVID, they, people were, you know, supposedly dying, right? Uh, wasn't it out in Potter's Field? They went ahead and they just took refrigerated bodies and dumped them in Potter's Field in mass graves. That's, you that's what I heard. That? I heard, I, I think I've even seen pictures of like uh, little holes dug up in... The show is it was crazy. There's a uh, there's probably bodies on, in the sewer somewhere. <laughs> that that wouldn't be done by our government. That would have been done by the mafia. But that's a whole other topic. We won't go there. We're not. Yeah. Well, let's let's not talk. I, I still have some people looking for some stuff coming for me, but. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Down in New York City, it's what is it, the East River, the Hudson River, and you know whatever ends up going in the sewers goes into the rivers. Yeah, up to... here, it's uh, in, in Niagara Falls. We got the Niagara River, and you just hope you don't go through the rapids and over the falls. <laughs> I want. Uh, do you ever? See, I'm sure you've seen the, the Niagara Falls and all that. But do, are there like a lot of animals in there? <laughs> like, I could imagine. Okay. <laughs> So they, they, I, I can't imagine there'd be a lot of animals in there, but I can tell you the place is haunted, you know, very, very haunted. Oh. Uh, a lot of people every single year, it's not something that's publicized, but a lot of people every year go over the falls. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure they do either by accident or because it's like a, like a ritual uh, su suicidal thing type of deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just did a paranormal investigation there back some months ago. I think it had to have been in May, something like that, maybe. Yeah, I guess it was May or June or something like that. And uh, apparently some young lady had gone missing, you know, and they said she went over the fall. She killed herself. So, you know, things went sideways with her boyfriend. And uh, it's like one of those things, well, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, what are you, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, you'll show them, all right. You went over the falls, you know. But yeah, it's it, it's what it is, and you know, people uh, tend to uh, take things you know out of proportion, and they think that suicide is a solution. And unfortunately, if you're not at peace in this lifetime, and you go out of this world, and you're still not at peace, then you think you're going to find peace on the other side. No, you're going to live with torment. This is the reason why they say if you kill yourself in a lot of religions, they say you go to hell. Mm. That's living hell. It's, I would, I, I understand, uh, like suicide. Well, this, this, uh, I, I'm just gonna say my opinion. Uh, if if you're in a lot of pain, like physical pain, I think sometimes ending it uh, prematurely might be good. Like, but but if if it's if it's like, oh man, that dude was a was a jerk and he didn't he didn't pay for the bill at uh, Applebee's. After you took me on a date, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not. Ever, I don't think suicide should be in that situation. But like, but say, like, I had my arms and legs blown off, and I'm just like a stump. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That, well, I guess that would be more psychological pain than physical pain. Well, I that's guess. true too. Um, so that. The... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at that one moment. Well, maybe like what, like an assisted suicide kind of thing. Yeah, like, uh, are are you are, do, like Dr. Kevorkian? Are you anti or pro Kevorkian? Kevorkian? Is that even? <laughs> Kevorkian, I don't know. I, I, that's a good question. I guess, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I, that's a good question. I mean, if, if the human body is uh, severely riddled with cancer, let's say. It's like giving up on uh, you. And it's yeah, I, I guess like almost like a euthanasia, you know, yeah. I, I, I guess there's a lot of countries that are trying to be able to uh, legalize it. I think they did in Canada, for that matter, just across the border here. Oh, really? However, yeah, yeah. I, I would say that I, I'm all for it. You know, if, if someone is, you know, critically ill and, and they're going to die, they're on their deathbed, you know, and they're in hospice or, or whatever, you know, I, let them go. You know why suffer? It's it's yeah. I don't know why this is not like a topic brought up more often in like anywhere. Because if I if I'm like if my body's leaving me before I leave me, uh, please please help me catch up to my body. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Well, there is a way to let go. There there definitely is. Remember what I was saying about 
uh, you know, being at peace and, and having your last rites read to you or, or being within one with, uh, you know, pastoral care or anything like that. There are, think about it, you know, think about how many people who, I guess, I don't know, all throughout the world, I, I've heard this time and time and time again, that people will say to friends or family members, they're going to say, I have a feeling I'm going to die. And they're not lying. They, 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 they just decide, hey, that's it, off. You know, it, it, like that that joke from The Simpsons. One of these days, boy, you're gonna wake up dead. You know, it's true. I, I think that some people may have some sense of consciousness in some way, shape, or form, where they can control it. I mean, there are other instances where uh, I, I don't know what you would call it, divine intervention comes in of some sorts, and uh, something ends up happening. I, I I've experienced divine intervention uh, within the past summer really myself, you know uh, yeah uh, ooh, ooh, very scary story if you want to hear it i'll tell it to you it it, it, it will give you goose pimples literally you'll be like oh my god I, if you want to hear it i'll tell you i i i, I do want to hear it, but i just want to say uh on, on the uh i forget what i was going to say oh uh, yeah tell me tell me the, the divine inter interventions was it was it like a like right. uh, like a almost like a almost death experience type of thing or yeah. Oh, yeah, those yeah. stick with you. Oh boy, perfect. I had this too. I had this too. Okay, all right, all right. Go on with the story. Let's hear it. Yeah, seriously. Okay, so uh, don't ask me what date it was. I can tell you it was on a Saturday, and it had to have been, I would say, in June. Okay. So, jeez, uh, jeez. Okay. So I'm here. Uh, I was driving on County Road. I believe it was in Amherst, New York. And I was, I, it's funny because before I left the house, I had YouTube on and I usually have it mixed on uh, playing a whole bunch of stuff. And, you know, being a psychic, I am always very in tune to the slightest thing that is out of place. If, if there's a glitch in the matrix that's happening, I'm going to pick up on it immediately. Yeah. I pick up everything. It's like monk. <laughs> you know, I'm on a TV show, you know, you know, this is everything with sight, you know. So uh, I, I picked up on some, some song came on more than twice. And it was Last Day Under the Sun by Volbeat. And I was like, what? Huh. This is weird. This is very, very weird. I'm like, huh? Then I get in the car. I got to go to a gem and mineral show and, and, and do all this stuff. Um, I was supposed to go live on napping at 2 o'clock. On a Saturday afternoon, I was doing like a, a special spiritual event or whatever. So I'm driving and I have, I don't know, more than 10,000 songs on my cell phone that gets synced up to my car and it gets put on to like a mixed playlist. Every genre you can possibly imagine. And uh, a lot, all, a lot all of Slayer, I heard. Errors. I heard there's a lot of Slayer in there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, well, it's it's not a lot of Slayer. No, I, I love my metal, don't get me wrong, but uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of different genres gotcha. and, and also eras or decades of music. So I get into the car, and all that's playing, song after song, and it's on shuffle, is death metal. And this is going on. And every song that popped up, you know, when, when you, I have a newer vehicle, so it goes and it shows the song. Gotcha. From the time that I got into the car, every song that came up was death, 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 death. So now I'm on high alert. I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me, right? And you're probably driving what the real hell fast, is this too. All about? <laughs> uh, not at all. No, no, I'm a very safe driver. Very Go, going honest. 20 miles I mean, per hour listening to some kidding. death metal? <laughs> nah, eh, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not a granny pants. <laughs> I, I drive to the speed limit, but you know what? I I knew that there was, a, I, I went ahead and I, I did something. I have a technique that I practice, which is called time shifting, where I can jump out to any date and time. I can also ride a timeline. Huh. I can also uh, see things that are happening anywhere in a timeline. Uh, I, 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 I want to be able to say until I meet an event horizon is what I want to call it. So I went ahead and I went, I took the entire route ahead of myself and I knew that I was going to be meeting an event horizon. And I said, Oh, okay. I'm going to be meeting the grim reaper. 
Well, that's interesting. I've never met the Grim Reaper before. I've, I've, I've conversed with Holy Spirit. Hmm. Um, well, this is going to be an interesting one because this is something I've never done before. So I said, all right, uh, Event Horizon. All right. Uh, it's going to be on this road. Okay, it's going to take X amount of time. And I'm trying to do these micro calculations in my head as to how much time I have but no matter what I did, no matter what road I took, even if I diverted and I took a, uh, I guess, different road to get where I got to be able to go, that I still had to take county road no matter what. So I ended up slowing down. I was in a 45 mile per hour zone. I dropped down to about 38 to 42 miles per hour. And I'm trying not to piss other drivers off behind me. So. Uh, even at one point, I slowed down to the point where I pulled over for a minute, and I was like, all right, let me try to buy myself some more time. What do I got here? What do I got here? Sure enough, I, I'm, I'm maybe about two miles away from my, uh, I, I guess, my gem and mineral show. I'm like, I'm going to get there w without a hitch, huh? I'm on a two-lane road, county road, as you can imagine. And I'm doing, again, about 38 miles per hour, and there's the event horizon. Oncoming car, opposite lane, comes over into my lane. What the right? And it, it, Right. Comes over into my lane. And now I possess some telekinesis ability, so I'm kind of like not on my watch because I'm expecting it, so I'm prepared. And all of my psychic kinetic ability is around me, and I'm diverting. I'm moving my vehicle. And I'm also using, uh, I guess, the pulse of the earth, if you will, the magnetic energy. And I'm saying, move that vehicle out of my way. So suddenly the car swerves. It, for, at first it went off into my lane a little bit, you know, is in my lane. But I, it took a hard turn off into the side of the road. Oh, my God. So it, it goes off to the side of the road. Now I've got maybe, let me think here. This has got to be jinx. Uh, trying to think, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, 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 maybe about uh, seventy-five feet at this point, maybe uh, ahead of me. So uh, it's coming in, and again, he's traveling at forty-five miles per hour, if not faster, at this point. So I'm moving as well, and all the cars start to be able to stop in front of me. He goes down into the ditch on the side, and because of the velocity and the that his vehicle had gone down into the ditch. He, his whole vehicle went driving down into the ditch and then flipped up in the air, upside down, and is now flying at my windshield upside down, this white car. And I'm like, okay, how many seconds do I have? I don't. Okay, jam the gas. Jam the gas, go off into oncoming traffic. All the cars had stopped behind him so i'm like all right i got some time and i swear bobby he misses my car by maybe about an inch maybe two inches on my passenger side he continues to flip upside down onto the road so now i'm really curious i'm like oh here we go and i'm raging two cars stop dead in the middle of the road one car right in front of me another one off to the grass now remember i accelerated so I wouldn't make any contact, so my car wouldn't be grazed. So now I've only got maybe, I don't know, 50 feet? Not not even. I, I, I would say not even that, maybe even less, maybe about 20 feet. So i got to be able to jam the brake, go off into the grass, and hope I don't hit the jerk that's in the grass or who stopped dead in the lane, okay, in front of me. As this other guy jumps out of his car as I'm trying to keep control of my vehicle, and he comes running out in the middle of the road right towards my vehicle that I'm trying to be able to stop. And I'm like yelling out my moonroof, get the fuck out of the road. <laughs> he's, he's so I, 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 I freaked. I was like, I'm going to kill somebody. Somebody's getting killed today. Somebody's dying here. This is, this is death. The whole thing smells like death. Were, so were you I becoming, go, yeah. was the Grim Reaper going into your body? Were you going to be the person that are going to, was going to pass one of these people? Now, what, what ended up happening was at the moment that the car came upside down, okay, I was distracted for a fraction of a second because the Grim Reaper went face to face with me. I saw the Grim Reaper. 
I saw him. He was like, hey, today's your day, bitch. I was like, no, <laughs> you think so, huh? Hold on. Hold, hold my beer. Hold on a minute here. Was so, he? All right. I, so I, you I got see... out of it. I, I screamed at, at the guy, get the fuck out of my way. I have I a question really quick. I jammed the gas. I have, uh, you see, so you're saying you've seen the Grim Reaper. You've seen him. Yes. Yes. Now, do you remember how dinosaurs are supposed to be like reptiles and scaly, but then they're like, oh, they actually had feathers. Now, did the Grim Reaper, was he wearing like, a, was he not dressed like the Grim Reaper or was he, or did he have like the black cloak and the, and the, the thing? Or did he have like, like a pink, like tutu on or something? Did, what, what did, did he, what did the he? Only, all right. So the only thing that I could describe him as very similar to the Holy Spirit, however, he, he did have. May, I was like, I don't know if you call it a sickle or what, whatever you call that. I saw the sickle. I saw the outline. It was a spirit. And, and he had something that looked like a sickle. Okay. That, that's, that's all it was. It was an outline. And I saw it. And I was like, ooh. And, and the sickle was pointed directly at me. So I was like, no, 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 no. So, so there, I, I there, just the, jammed the, the gas visuals to get of out him of there. Oh, I was man. like, no, out. Jeez. Ow. It, I, all right, go on. I, 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 be careful, please. I, I can't make this shit up. The thing is, is that I went and I, I jammed the gas again and I swerved and I went around all of these morons that were standing there <laughs> like, oh, let's go help that driver, right? And I'm driving away. I, I didn't want to stick around. I didn't care. And it had nothing to do with me. I wanted nothing to do with that energy. So I got out of there really, really quickly. And I'm driving maybe a few feet away, and I shake my fist at the sky, and I started summoning all of the angels, one by one by name, and God by name, even Jesus, summoned all of them. I go, no, fix this. You wanted me. I said no. Uh Uh-uh. Anybody who's killed back there, you better fix this. I don't care what you have to do. Fix this. And I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. And something happened at that moment. As I started screaming, it was like, if you guys ever saw the movie, uh, the closest I can describe it, the butterfly effect, right? Where everything shakes. I think Ashton Kutcher was in that one. Yeah. So something, something happened. So I ended up uh, going home and I got on to all the local forums and I said, what, what happened with that white car up on County Road? And nobody, nobody knew anything. No, what, what, you know? So a week passes, I still don't see anything. It's not in the, the fire wire. It's not in Erie County fire would, wire. It's yeah, not that in sounded Ever like County a horrific, wire. it would have been somewhere. You would have heard about that. Oh, yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. So then I call the, what is it now, the Erie County Sheriff's Department a week later. And I said, look, you know, I was up on County Road like around 1.50 in the afternoon on this day or whatever. I, I'd have to go back and look the date up. So uh, I go ahead and I said to them, hey, do you guys have record of, you know, a car accident? You know, I wanted to know if the guy lived. I've been praying. And I was like, wow, um, you know, can you give me any information? I go, hold on, let me look it up. He goes, hey, he looks it up. He says, oh, we didn't respond to that one. The Stadies did. So he says, you got to call the state, you know, the Stadies. So I said, okay. So I call up the Stadies and I said, look, you got information about a, a white vehicle that flipped around 1.50 in the afternoon on Saturday afternoon. And the... Uh, the guy says to me, hold on, let me let me check it out, right? So he goes, he checks it out, and he says, you know what? We received a phone call about it. Now, I want you to, I want to back up a little bit. I want to say that the sheriff did have a call on it. He did, but they didn't, they weren't the ones who responded. So it is verified. It did happen, right? Now, what's interesting is that when I called the Sadies, they said that there was an accident People had called and reported an accident. When they got there, only 12 minutes later, there was no sign of a vehicle. There was no debris on the road. No, there was no ambulances dispatched. Nothing. Everything was gone. 
You reset time. But, I, I, is that your vibe on it? I, even I don't. I, I, I handed it. I delegated it off to God. I really like hope you don't. You're not going to erase me, right? Have you ever used these powers for bad? No. That's, I've only saved lives. That's thank thank goodness that you're like, because uh, I, well, actually, I, told I, you, I, 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 I told you, we gave you the goosebumps. I'm the feeling, goosebumps I'm feeling. <laughs> Chicky, stop it. How? Oh, when did you, you know what ducky ducky made ducky just said something in the chat he said it was like the sheriff's kid who wrecked it and made that disappear <laughs> I, that, that's Could what be. that's what knox had said too knox said the same thing i don't know i really don't know yeah, yeah. still there's going to be you know something you know something anything you know some kind of report why you make it disappear i don't know several shades of bizarro but is this the first time you had like a like a like a, a psychic uh, calling that I think it reset time personally? I think that because when when you see something so horrific, sometimes your mind is just like that did not happen, and it actually didn't happen. You look at you, then you look, but you're like, oh, I thought I thought the I thought okay. the tree landed on the squirrel and the cat, but it kind of just landed on the garbage bag. There was no squirrel or cat. Thank goodness. It, yeah. But, did you did you have the like uh 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 is this your first like experience like a psychic experience uh no i i've definitely predicted other things i back in uh i was living in new york city right so this goes back to the year 2001 and in uh, uh, July. Uh, no, wait, let me back it up. It had to have been May, excuse me, May of 2001. I was taking a train back from uh, Massachusetts. Somebody picked up on a Boston accent from me. Yes, I spent some time there. So interestingly enough, the uh, train that I was taking in, uh, there was an interesting experience because I, I, I just took a minute to use the restroom and then I came back and Something didn't feel right. Something felt off. And this was over Memorial Day weekend of 2001. And I went back to the seat and I saw my uh, my friend and I said, hey, did you vibe that? Because my friend was psychic as well. He says, yeah. And I go, what the hell is that? He's like, we just crossed over the New York border. We just we just crossed back in from, from Connecticut to New York. Yeah. And I go, oh, shit. Right? So I get back. And we, that was back then, you know, the trains that came in from the north, the Amtrak, used to come into Grand Central. So we pull into Grand Central Station, and I just got this feeling. You know, I was looking around me like, who's the bad guy? Uh, I felt like, you know, literally, there was just pure. I, I don't like to be able to use the word evil, because evil would say that maybe, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know. I don't know what the words could be. However. It just felt as though there was just something not right. There was something, there was a disturbance in the force to say the very least. And at that point, I, I got back into work the very next day and I sat with my secretary and I meditated for a moment and I said, something doesn't feel right. I came out of state and, you know, I came from in, came in from out of state and when you go out of state and you come back in and something don't feel right, then you know something something's up so i said i need to get out of new york now i want you to understand nick that i had lived in new york all my life all of my life and here i am getting ready to leave my state to be i, I just went on a vacation you know up to massachusetts for a weekend you know uh, but I, I, on a whim, I'm, I'm getting ready to leave. I, I, no, no, no. Something evil this way comes, so to speak, right? And I, I started to talk to, I was working in a nursing home, and I was talking to all my nurses, and a lot of them are very spiritual. And I was saying, listen, something evil's coming. I go, I'm leaving New York, and, and I invite you to leave with me. Something very, very bad is coming, and you're not safe here in Rockaway. And was I was it Andrew up Cuomo putting in no. not even no <laughs> what think about it, 2001. Okay. 
So I, I, I put in my resignation the second week of June. I was out. I gave myself a drop-dead deadline to be out of New York by July the 15th of 2001. This, you seriously sure left that time? Yeah, I left Holy. immediately on June, excuse me, on July the 15th of 2001. Now, the first night, I'm living up in Salem, Massachusetts, okay? And this is, you're going to see how creepy this shit is, right? So I'm living in Salem, Massachusetts. It's late at night, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's now July the 16th, okay? And I'm living up on uh, Lafayette Street in Salem, Massachusetts. And this is the morning of July the 16th, 2001, okay? I'm sitting there in my bed. It's late. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. And um, it was like um, 3.33 a.m., for that matter. And I hear, ah! bang! I'm like, whoa, what was that? I go and I look out my window. There's a car accident right outside my bedroom window. I'm like, oh, snap, this is the first night I'm here. What the hell? So I, I go and I know I, I dial 911 on my phone because who else is awake at 3.33 in the morning, right? So I dial 911 on my phone. They go, yeah, what's your emergency? And I said, um, I want to report a, an accident. There's been a crash uh, right outside my you know, bedroom window here. They go, is anybody injured? And I said, I don't know. I'm not getting up out of my bed. And this just happened, you know, this is where you can send the, the medics, like the corner of Clinton and uh, Clinton and Lafayette Street, for that matter. And I was like, okay, this is, you know, whatever. So they go ahead, they send over, you know, the fire engines, the police, the ambulance or whatever, and they took care of the accident. Now, the very next evening, this is the morning, you guys could call Salem Police Department. You can get the CAD reports on this. I'm a teller of many truths. The very next evening, the morning of July the 17th, again, 3.33 a.m., I hear again, <laughs> bang! Are you kidding me? Another one? I said two nights, are, uh, yeah. So I go, I call 911. Because I kept on asking God, I was like, why am, why am I rushed out of New York? Why am I rushed out of New York? This is my answer. You're like a guardian angel. I think that you, I, I think I, you might have been sent here. Or maybe not through you, old, uh, via your mother, of course. Because. Yeah. But you have. You, I, I did a lot. Of, I, I, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot, Nick. I've seen a lot. I, I can't explain the things that I've witnessed through the divine. And you I, take I, action, like too. To say that I, There's a lot of people out there that? that would sit back and do jack shit, not know what to do. But you, you take the action. Which I do. I have to say is much more than anything gummy nerds probably would ever do in the chat room, who's a, a big old troll. Don't, uh, yeah, that's all right. But I, yeah, I, I'm happy. I, I'm happy you're on my side because I'm sure some shit's gonna come towards me one day, and you're gonna swoop in and save me, which I'm very happy <laughs> that you're, you're, so, okay. So you, so you called nine one one twice and and saved two people from these these car crashes. Did were they like? Was it icy out? Is it cold on that? In no, there? it's the middle of the summer. It's oh. the middle of the summer. Because, because that well, ice, remember, July the 5th, July the 16th and July the 17th. Good point. You just caught me and not remember. I'm, I'm a little intoxicated. That's why. But That's uh, fine. That's fine. That's all right. I got you. But damn. Uh, did, did, you, did you move or did this keep happening? <laughs> No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Um, I stayed there. I, I stayed I stayed put and I just got a hold of as many friends as I possibly could and I said, You need to get the fuck out of New York City with the silly quick staff. So I don't care how you do it, you just get the hell up here, you know, you do what you gotta do. You did. And I got as many friends as I possibly could out of New York. Some of them were like, Hey, you know, uh I don't know. I don't know. And then when it happened, they were like, oh, shit. You know, uh, whoops. Uh, yeah. 
a lot of them are ending up, you know, volunteering to help, you know, recover bodies at the 9-11 site, you know, the World Trade Center when it went down. So, you know, they you, you ask, where was I when 9-11 happened? I, I was prepared. That was a, a terrible day. And I was supposed to see some girl in the city that day. And and my parents like, oh, my God, there's there's planes hitting buildings. And I was like, well, it was just like a little little thing. And then I looked, I was like, oh, my God, what the fuck's happening? Is right. this, is this, is yeah, because exactly. of my pe- I, right. I have a weird psychosexual thing. I think my penis might be causing uh, destruction around the planet at, at certain points. Oh, we're, we're just going to have to cut it off then. Ah! I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, can, can I um, uh, take a quick midnight in the sewer break? Uh, it's 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 a uh, four minutes till. Uh, would you would you would you be uh, good to stick around and tell tell us? Uh, I have some more questions for you too. We also we have some questions sure. from the audience. Oh. I have some answers. We we I got a lot to share with you guys, and definitely you know what if you got questions, I got answers. All right, uh, let's just take a quick musical interlude while I use the the little uh, little rats room. We can take a, it's gonna. It's going to be a little bit of a, a tiny break here. Uh, but we'll be right back with more Nick the Rat. This is TDHR with Logic Bomb. Uh, thank you, Chicky Hot, for for making me have hairs sticking up in places I didn't know was possible to stick up. We'll be, we'll, we'll be right back with more. your blood to Nick the Rat Radio. For every point of blood you donate, we shall send you a fucking nothing. Eh? Yeah, send us your blood. I, I think we just ran to an advertisement. Care about the children of the world, you will send all Let's, your blood uh, to st- Nick the Rat Radio. Alright, stop that ad. Um, we're, we're back to Nick the Rat Radio with... Uh, Ch- Chicky, can you can you can you turn your radio up in the background? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> can, 
Can can you say uh, it's midnight in the sewer? Yeah, it's midnight in the sewer. Ah, it's so nice that um, that I have you here this late in uh, ah. on the line with us. We uh, you're also a, a, a like a life coach, right? Like you you could you could help people that have like problems with uh, stuff going on in their life, like love and. Uh, yeah. Etc. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Um, I, I do life, love, and well-being coaching. We, we, we got some emails in because I, I did uh, promote this a little bit, and we got a whole bunch of people that sent in messages, but I, would it be okay if I read a couple that were... Diane, were these chosen? Yeah, go right ahead. No, it's totally All right, cool. Uh, go ahead. All right, let's just uh, check this email out right here. This is for uh, for Chicky. My my wife and I are growing further apart. We sleep back to back in bed, and we never make love anymore. Uh oh. Uh, she still makes great lasagna, but how do I spice things up in the love making department? <laughs> oh wow! All right, all right. Well, obviously, when there's a breakdown in intimacy, there usually is a, a breakdown in the emotional aspect as well. Yeah. And we have to revert back, you know, all of us like, you know, psych 101, you know, or communications, you know, in college, we learned about Maslow's needs, right? So it's interesting. Wait, hold on one second. I don't, Laszlo's knees? Maslow, M-A-S. Yeah. L-O-W. Maslow's needs. That's Maslow's need, need pyramid. And we have physiological, we have safety, we got love and belonging, esteem, and self-actualization needs. And what ends up happening a lot of times in relationships is one partner or both partners end up not having all of their needs met. And there's yeah. an emotional breakdown. And obviously when there's an emotional breakdown, sometimes people have too much pride to be able to communicate about it or they have communicated about it and the need to uh, have that acknowledged is ignored. So, or, or just not taken seriously enough. So I would say for this gentleman and his wife to be able to get to talking. Ah, thank you, Servo, thank you. Servo, so, yeah, he, he uh, knows Servo, what's going on. Yeah, he put up that, uh, that Maslow's needs pyramid. There you go, the hierarchy of needs, there you go. So uh, I would say get to talking to your wife about all of your needs and how your needs and how her needs are somehow not being met. And it, it definitely goes beyond physiological needs and you might be prioritizing other things in the relationship or maybe there may be a need that is not being met that's causing a little bit of lacking in the, I guess, emotional responsiveness uh, department. And I know that, you know, sounds almost accusatory. However, it's not. It's a matter of getting to the root of the issue and you and your missus need to do some talking about this hierarchy of needs and figure out what is missing besides obviously the sex because obviously you know everything else is more important to a lot of other people you know sometimes being able to work or stressing out over other things or just not feeling as though uh, there's enough time even for slowing down or date night or anything like that so you know you, sometimes you just have to be able to make time for one another like you did in the absolute beginning the happiness needs to happen too, because if the hierarchy of needs is not being met, you're not going to be happy. If you're not happy, your sex drive is going to collapse too. I'll leave it right there. What if, uh, what if the needs of the person uh, is like is like a deep dark secret though? If it's a deep dark secret, like say and say the, uh, say the relationship started from like like what if. What if this guy likes something? Oh, like a kink? Yeah. What if he has like this weird like kink from the start that um, that that he's always been? What if he lies? What if what if the, the what if the person's lying to themselves? Hmm. That's a, that's an interesting aspect, and I think that 
uh, both partners need to be on the same page. That's true. When it comes down to uh, agreeing to kinks, because if he's got a kink and the missus doesn't, or she thinks the kink is something that's out of her interest area, then uh, something has to be, you know, there has to be a compromise. It does. You know, you, yeah, a husband and a wife uh, can sit there and watch TV every single night, but if they're not watching programs that they both enjoy, somebody's going to end up feeling, I guess, bored or uh, like isolated, you know, from things that they want to enjoy. And if that continues to happen, it's always about what the husband wants to watch, but not about what the wife wants. And sometimes you have to trade off. Sometimes you have to do things. You're not always too interested in doing sometimes because, you know, one one person scratches the other person's back, you know. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes you, you have to, but there are some people in this world that are not willing to compromise. And if there is something that the other person is not willing to do in a relationship, then you've got to figure out what you want to do. Maybe find other, other ways, other kinks, or find new kinks, you know, something that you both could be able to get into. Because, Explore it together. you know, it, it, yeah, or together, exactly. It seems exactly. like communication Something. Communication is, is um, important in relationships. It is. It, it definitely is. And if you got, like, secrets, you know, like if he likes the cross dress, yeah. you know, and, and have his nails painted, you know, then, all right, but if she's not into that, you know, or maybe he doesn't, maybe she doesn't know that that's what he's into. You know, maybe he has an esteem con- or, or confidence issue going on where, He's afraid that she's going to reject him if she finds out about that. Oh, but right? but but, chicken, but that, that that's on his fault. Don't you know? we all have secrets though? Not everybody. Not everybody. Some people have a lot of. It depends. I mean, if you got it, a lot of esteem as far as self worth goes, and you have a lot of confidence, which is self trust, then you are not going to have as many secrets. Gotcha. I mean, obviously there are things that some people may not be too proud of. But if you've got a good sense of esteem and a good sense of confidence, then your 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 life partner, your wife, you know, or your husband, there there should be nothing held back there unless you don't trust your partner. Now, if there's trust issues going on, then that's a safety concern. That go and and it's also a respect. It's also an esteem issue too. This is true. This is true. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. I, I hope that that uh, questioner uh, is. I'm sure they're satisfied. I'm I'm very satisfied with that answer. I, you're, you're good at this. Oh. Yeah, are you? Uh, Thank you. Are, you are you ready for an, another question here? Yeah, go right ahead. All right, this is from the the audience. Uh, dear, Ch- you spelled chicky wrong there. But uh, I've been I've been with my lady friend for five years. Oh God, this is a little. This is a little, uh, a little raunchy. Is that okay? I don't know if. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right. It's late night radio. We're good. Go for it. I've been, I've been with my lady. <laughs> I'll try. I should pre-screen these, these questions. I've been with my lady friend for five years, and I cannot get her into anal. I have, I am not into forcing her into stuff good uh but i don't think this relationship can last with without some ass play uh but, 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 sorry this is not funny this is somebody's question here uh besides from leaving her what else can i do i even bought her a custom fit strap on with our initials engraved on its testicles but she won't even try it on okay so he wants he he wants to be pegged. Do yeah, I it sounds like yeah. Correctly? It sounds like pegging. Okay. This is uh, he wants pegging with his lady friend of five years, and he wants to get out of a relationship if she's not into it. He's. Oh, I don't it know. sounds it sounds like this guy has like zero relationship skills, and and five years is a drop in a bucket <laughs> when it comes down to relationships. If he's been in the relationship this long, and he's talking about breaking up. I I don't know. This is the kind of guy that you'd probably find in the bathroom, you know, probably uh, 
look at the escort websites going, oh, she looks nice. Let me take care of my needs looking at this one, right? So I, I don't know. I mean, it always concerns me, you know, gravely when somebody's go-to is, well, if I can't get my way, I'm going to break up. This is That's a power and a control true. issue. This is obviously somebody who's got some esteem issues, definitely. Yeah, I was about to, I was actually, I was going to say that they seem like maybe they're uh, caring because they, they put like the initials on, they like made a personalized gift, but you're right. If, if, if he's threatening like a, was that an alma mater? Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, was that when you make a threat against ending something? Uh, either way. Yeah, why, if, he, if he actually loves this woman and, and if he really needs ass play. I mean, they're, 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 yeah. listen, let me, let me tell this guy, okay? You really want to ask play that badly? Go oh, out, get yourself a dildo, and be able to suction cup it to the floor and have fun, okay? That, do that's it what yourself. I'm going to tell you. You do, Take... you do what you need to do. <laughs> that's it. Don't give, any, don't give your partner an ultimatum. Don't threaten them, you know, because that's not cute. That's not cool. That's not funny. And it just means that you don't love your partner. I, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. But sh <laughs> should he should he tell her when he does this? Uh, that's you know totally up to him, you know. And it's, okay. he, <laughs> it's a form of masturbation, really. You know, I mean, he's going to use toys, right? Is is masturbating cheating? That's a question from uh, me. No, it's not. No, it, every single person in the world like touches themselves. But what if you're thinking of like, uh, so, no. what if you're okay. thinking of but, uh, uh, somebody other than your, your partner? Okay. So, all right. So if you masturbate somebody other than your partner, no, no, then, no. then yeah, because you're you, like, no, you're thinking your partner thinking. out of the truth that you've been with someone else. But there was something more that I was going to say, because I, I've spoken to a number of people in my professional career yes that have okay so i'm going to bring up a really touchy topic no pun intended here so what's interesting is that since the beginning of the pandemic there has become a, a new pandemic <laughs> maybe it's an epidemic i don't know but either way um it, it's masturbation addiction and this has become a huge thing during this entire pandemic because people had been separated. They were stuck at home. And, well, you know, what do you do, right? Chiki, so, Chiki, I don't know. it's always been a huge thing. It, oh, wait. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it's become, uh, I can't begin to tell you how many people I'm meeting these days. They're like, I have a, they own it. They'll say, I have a masturbation addiction. And it's like, well, yeah, you were cooped up in your house for God knows how many months. There's nothing to do, you know. So, what are you supposed to do, right? Sex is so, a huge. It's a huge. Uh, this. Do you think sex is magic? Ah, uh, <laughs> I it's sex magic. Uh, I, I'm not sure. How are we using the words magic um, in well, context here? What, what is that called? Uh, do you know tantric? T a tantric sex okay okay yeah that's when you like build up energy and you don't release it or something right yeah yeah people do that with edging and stuff yeah sure right do you think that could um like move mountains or do you think you could use that energy to to do to do certain things with is that good question uh good question I think that nothing, I mean, if you have energy, let's just say you create an energy ball, right? Yeah. And you want to be or able two. to use that energy ball <laughs> for something, right? Or two, right? Two energy balls. So you have two energy balls and you want to do something with it, right? So I, I would say possibly. I mean, obviously, there are the rules, obviously, you know, uh, to the game of how you use that energy. Wait, uh, there there's are some rules? things that universe just doesn't allow. <laughs> there's rules to how I use my energy balls. <laughs> what, what, well, not, what are the not rules? in the sexual context, but energy as in the magic. You know, what are you going to do? You want to move a mountain? No, you're not allowed to move that mountain. Don't touch that mountain. Leave that mountain alone. Okay. <laughs> what did that mountain ever do to you? <laughs> it's, it's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait, wait. Uh, do you do you know do you know more of these rules? I like I like uh I like rule sets for, for some reason. All right. So there there's something you can be able to find. There's an audio book yeah. uh, by his name is Dick Sutphin S U T P H I N, uh, and it's the Fifty Universal Laws. So you can be able to learn a little bit more about that. I'll refer you guys on to that lovely piece of literature. And uh, there's a whole bunch of them, like literally a whole bunch of them. I, I have to be able to go into my Google Drive right now and look at all the, the cosmic and spiritual laws of the universe. Hey, hey, keep, uh, keep your way. Google Drive yeah. closed. This is a family-friendly um, episode. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here, here, I'll give you one of them, okay? The law of harmony. Uh, this law supersedes even the fundamental law of karma because the purpose of karma is to attain harmony and balance. The universe is perfectly balanced. When you're in harmony, you're in balance. There is nothing permanent without harmony. As harmony can be considered another name for love. Once you have evolved to the position of living an entire life in harmony, you are free from the wheel of reincarnation. Huh. How about that? That that actually kind of there's harmony and what was the other one? And balance, right? Oh, uh, use, yeah, use the harmony, harmony to balance, get balance, the... and then once you master that stuff, then you're free from reincarnation, which means your your lessons are done, baby. You kind of break the loop. You. You're done. Uh, like I I see the 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 balance is kind of like a circle, and I see harmony as like a line, like a like a vibrating line that goes uh in one way. So I could see harmony uh break. Oh, karma. Uh, but karma is like a yep. is is the balance, and harmony would break right. karma because you're going and you're vibrating somewhere. You're making that right on exactly. You're gonna be in vibration with something, <laughs> something. Two, uh, two I'm trying giant to be able to remember balls. there was another um, another one of those funky vibrational charts or whatever I can't remember who uh, or what it was uh, it was called oh well uh, I'll, I'll I'll remember it and I'll mention it later. Uh, uh, Chick, Chick, I I have a question for you before we get back to these other questions. Uh, do do uh, all right. So al alcohol is a drug, and I've been I've been drinking and I've been uh, partaking in in um, marijuana a little bit. Uh, are these bad for uh, uh, psychic powers or spiritual uh, or harmony? Is it is it bad? It's it's bad for me. I know it's not good, but okay. So what it does? Uh, okay. So I happen to meditate every single day, and I kind of get my dopamine and my serotonin and all of that from the epiphanies that I get about my life and my experiences from a, like meditation. the same high that you get, okay? Um, I also get, but there's, during meditation, that numbness that comes where you can be able to focus. So what's very interesting is, I wouldn't necessarily say it's bad, but it's a distraction. That's the correct words I wanna be able to say. That it can be a distraction from, I, I, I guess things you would normally, I guess, overlook yeah. while you're distracted. So there may be something going on in your life that you may not want to accept the lesson on at the time. So while you are in this distracted state, you're denying yourself that lesson. But remember, once you decide to lean into that lesson, you, you get this huge surge of serotonin and dopamine, as well as a boost to your esteem and confidence. You're completing a task. You're doing what you're ignoring. You're right, exactly. So I, I I don't know if that's something that can help you. It's the same thing with video games. People do the same thing where you're distracted by a video game by by numbing your brain from the moment. Well, it's isn't the same thing. isn't isn't meditation numbing your brain for the moment too? Uh, it <laughs> kind of sort of it's, it's is, not, it's like the reverse focus of more clearly on yeah. one thing. It yeah. lets you focus on just one thing. And when you're in meditation, there are different types of meditation you can be able to use. I like to use transcendental, but I like to be able to look at the lessons or the things that I've witnessed over the past week or the past day, and I go, what's the common denominator? What's standing out here? What do I need to take away from this? How is it 
affecting me? And how can I make myself a little bit more aware so I don't have to go through any uncomfortable associations with any of those experiences that I may have had? How can I make it better? How can I be able to bring more happiness and more joy, more harmony, more abundance, more love? These are the things that I contemplate while I'm in my meditation, rather than focusing on IRC, (laughs) you know, or social media, or checking my email. Social media is evil. And yet... IRC is mostly, yeah, the mundane. mostly, it's okay. It's IRC, there's, there's a couple yeah. evil entities within, but, <sighs> yeah. uh, but Chicky, t- have you ever meditated on weed though? I can honestly say yes, I have. It's... And I found, I found it to be a very different experience. I, I, uh, I, I think weed is a, definitely a form of meditation for me. But it's also it's also escapism as well. Um, and video games is escapism. It's it's uh, you can become addicted to anything. Anything could be bad, but also anything could be good as well if you draw the good out of it. I right, think. exactly. Actually, uh, for the first time since 2019, I had a drink last weekend. Was it no the weekend before? Excuse me. So I had this one bottle of Bacardi that I haven't opened. You know, I bought it in 2019, never opened it because I don't really drink. But a situation was rearing its head where I had to do something to change my reality. And I was fed up with the situation and I went ahead and I took three shots. (laughs) And I sat there and I went into a deep meditative state while I was under the influence of alcohol. But when I did that, I intentionally went down into my subconscious mind and I reprogrammed how I responded because I wanted to change some of my core programming. And I used alcohol to access that part of my brain. You're a, you're, you're like a pillar of feeling. I don't know if you're an angel anymore. I think you are just, uh, you might be magical. Chicky, you're, okay, let's, let, let's go to, let's go, let's ask you another question from the audience. Is that, is that okay if you go back to one of those? Yeah, that's fine. Go right ahead. All right. Uh, uh, you also do readings too, don't you? But we're not going to do any of those tonight. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I actually, you know what I did? I, I actually cracked out the science of mind wisdom cards. So I figured I wouldn't actually do energy readings because that can be a little bit uh, too flowy, if you will. Mm. Um, and I can actually penetrate people on a very emotional level when I do those types of readings. But I did crack out the science of mind wisdom cards by uh, Ernest Holmes. Oh, so if and I, I could pull some cards if need be. Well, let's let's first read this uh, uh, this other question over here, and maybe we'll whip out some cards. I have, I do not know. Let's see here. Oh, we got a uh, uh, hi, Chicky. My name is Robbie, and I'm a 25 year old man living in San Francisco. Uh, my only roommate is my cat, who who I love, but this. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, my audience is weird, but uh, I'm, I'm reading ahead. Uh, but I. But how do I get him to stop watching me make passionate, hot, sticky love with my dates when I bring them home for the night? This. Are you? Uh, are you? Can you talk to animals? Are animals? Uh... I. 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 I'm. A, I'm an animal communicator. I'm also an animal behaviorist. Um. I, what I would do seriously is associate the cat watching you have sex with somebody um, with something that would be uncomfortable. So I would say that any time the cat were to be looking at you, have a coffee can filled with coins. Okay. And, or, or a jar filled with coins, something that's not going to break. Obviously, you know, something that's going to make a lot of noise, right? And shake it really loud so it makes a loud clank, clank, clank noise. You know, really, re- uh, I, I guess you can say noisy, if you will. 
a, a disruptive noise, yeah. sound. So it'll startle the cat. So anytime the cat looks at you having sex to, uh, you know, associate it with this unpleasant sound and the cat will learn after, you know, a couple of times there, I, it don't, don't, don't go staring, you know, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the wisest thing. That's how you change their behavior really is associate with something that's unpleasant. It's the same thing for you out there that, uh, you know, the cats are getting into the plants or the cats are doing something you, you disrupt the behavior. Um, I, I see that somebody in the chat room is squirting um, them with a, a squirt bottle. I would use <laughs> physical violence uh, or attack an animal because, you know, you think it's cute and funny until one morning when you wake up and you don't have eyes anymore. They will get you. They will <laughs> get you. <laughs> <laughs> Cat, may... Cats are like women, okay? Cats are like women. They're, they can be vicious. And just when you least expect it, you know, a cat will get you. They really will. They, they, and, and you won't be expecting it. Next thing you know, you could be like, oh, he's telling your buddy, if, you know, your, your roommate, you take me to the hospital, please. You got to treat your animals with respect. Uh, I would say just make like a, a – like a, Put like a put like a mirror around your bed or something, so the cat looks at the cat, and the cat's gonna be like, "Whoa, there I am." They won't even know you're doing it. Come yeah. on, if you're having sex, you know how to build a fort or something out of pillows. This is true. It's a lot of effort. Hold on a minute, Dave. <laughs> let me let me build my pillow fort. All oh, all hold, hold on a minute. Get a. Actually, those those beds that have the curtains is that why they built them in like Victorian days? The the beds with the curtains because because everybody had like cats and squirrels and stuff, and it'd be like all the wildlife watching you have sex. I don't. Oh no! Actually, I from what I've read, and I might be wrong on this, but then again, I might be right. Uh, it was because of bugs. Oh, people wanted to sleep without getting bugged, literally. Yeah, bugs suck, man. Mosquito netting, it was. <laughs> yeah, really. You wake up in the middle of the night, you have something buzzing around you, like, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, that's definitely a no no. Ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Chicky, is it okay if we take uh, another quick break? Because I'm on my third beer now and. <laughs> Go ahead. We're going to play a quick song. Uh, if, you, if you'd like to stick around a little bit longer, that would be uh, amazing because I, I feel like I'm talking to an angel. And I need that in my life sometimes. Thank you. I think there's just so, many, so much neg negativity out there. And you are a, a beacon of positivity. And that's what you are. You're a beacon. You're, you're, you're... Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to um, take a quick break. We're going to listen to XXLUK with Jazz Bar. We'll be right back with more Nick the Rat. We shall be doing uh, other stuff later, but we're going to um, continue on with the interview with Chicky Hot. Go to her website, www.chicky.org. Wow, you have chicky.org? You can probably sell that for a I got lot of Chiki. money. <laughs> yeah, I got chicky.org and I got chickyhoss.com and uh, right. napping.net. Go to all those websites right now. We'll be right back with more Nick the Rat soon. And here's XXLUIK with Jazz Bar. Thank you. 
10 minutes is a long time to be away from you. Chicky is a not a troll. It's not a. She doesn't like to spread that negative energy, which is. But I also I look through it. You know, I don't even know if it's negative energy. It's just energy. It's uh, words. It's um, stuff coming through the ether from other people, and you know. If you're ever in a car crash, I know who I want nearby. Or if you ever need help. Or if you're just talking to somebody. But you know, it's, it's fun to be negative. I'm, I'm a negative Nancy too. Like this song is very repetitive. It's a free song. It's a, on SoundCloud, and I chose it to listen to tonight. And it was super repetitive. But we're right back. We're back now with more uh, Chicky Hot. We have the incredible uh, life coach, paranormal expert, uh, guardian angel. <sighs> Goes ah, oh, jeez. I have, I have a question for you, Chicky. Yes. Conspiracies. They're real, right? <laughs> it depends on what we're talking about now. <laughs> uh, everything. Like, in, in the realm of the word conspiracy, there are conspiracies. Okay. So, there's, there's always, there's always going to be a conspiracy about something, right? Yes. Or you can create a conspiracy for that matter. But remember... Right? This is where we go down the rabbit hole. Thoughts are things. Anything that you could possibly think of yeah. is a thing yes. somewhere in the universe. Yes. Okay, so with that with that <laughs> in a play, um, which conspiracy makes you the most upset? Like it, like uh, something that's that's well known by everybody and uh it and, oh. and just nobody does anything. Like um Okay. I'm going to go there. All right. I'm going to go there because I, I, want, I wanted to throat punch somebody the other day on this one. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Ivermectin. And uh, what's it called? Hydro, hy hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine. Two buzzwords. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They, 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 the, the two things. It, it, the biggest conspiracy about, oh, it cures COVID. The, the, I, I swear I want to throat punch people on this one. It does not cure COVID, and I will explain. Pick up a, phy a physician's desk reference, PDR, okay? Go to the PDR or look up drugs.com okay. and look up these drugs, okay? What do they kill? What do both of these kill? They kill parasites. They kill worms. They're, yeah, now, they're dewormers. The, but right. you, could also, you could also so use them the for uh, rosacea. What? You could use it on your skin. For right. Me. Is rosacea, uh, well, is that parasites in your skin, though? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, it kills yeah. stuff. It, it's, it's a killer. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me explain something. In most countries, okay, like in India and in China and Japan and all, all these other places, they, it's normal to deworm humans. Okay. Yeah. It's very normal. Yeah because of the foods that many of these countries eat, well, including humans, we eat so much sugar. I mean, uh, worms obviously thrive on sugar. Now, think about it, okay? They always say, don't feed your dog sugar. Why? He's gonna get worms. We have all learned this. We, you get a new puppy, don't feed your dog sugar, right? You're gonna get worms, okay? How much sugar do we all eat? How many things do we eat that's carb loaded? Because we end up getting worms because there's sugar. obviously larvae or whatever that's even in the sugar. I've been eating a lot of coconut sugar lately. I know, I, I know, I know, I know I need to be deworms. <laughs> but the thing is, is that human beings carry parasites. That's We're the bottom line. To it. We have parasites. We have plenty of them. 
But the thing is, is that ivermectin and the, the hydrochloroquine or whatever it's called, um, these things kill parasites. Now, the reason why you would want to kill parasites or to be able to kill worms in the gut is because 80% of your immune system is dependent on good health gut. That's a healthy gut. If you have an unhealthy gut, then you are going to have a compromised immune system. So this is the reason why they say if you got uh, COVID, they're going to treat you with zinc to be able to improve your immune system. They're going to treat you also with any secondary infections. They'll put you on z pack And then they could possibly even put you on that hydro, <coughs> excuse me, the hydro or the ivermectin, because if there's a possibility that you've got worms, it's not going to hurt you to deworm you. But they, most doctors don't want to prescribe medication unless they've got a reason to yeah. believe that you do have worms. But most human beings do have worms. So I should start taking ivermectin right now because I definitely have worms. Because uh, beer is basically uh, uh, sugar. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Definitely. I actually well, did not know this because I, I never had a dog. I've had cats, but I never fed a cat sugar. I never said, "Hey, here, oh, here, yeah. kitty, here, have a lollipop." Well, <laughs> when you get a when you get a new kitten, okay, what do you do? Okay, you flea dip it, right? You know, you get rid of the fleas, you get rid of the ear mites, and you deworm. Always, always. <laughs> and then don't give them sugar. Well, sugar is evil. <laughs> yes, yeah, sugar is sugar is evil. It is. Is, like, is even sugar me, I'm, I'm getting into the Halloween candy? That's, that's, I think sugar is the most biggest conspiracy that that I hate. Yeah. Definitely. I, I would agree. But yeah, that, that, that the one I, I met this woman uh, who worked for one of the not for profits here in town. Yeah. And uh, she was telling me about this ivermectin. And she's like, Oh, it cures. Look at all these news articles. And look at Fox News and ivermectin. They're saying it's the cure and the doctors are denying us. It's like, no, it's worms, dude. Stop it. Stop <laughs> breeding ignorance. Please just stop. Oh, my God. I had to smack myself in the forehead going, are you kidding me? Yeah, Well, the, it's not going to cure him, but it's also not going to hurt them too much. You might get rid of some worms. Yeah, well, I've been taking monolaurin, uh, which is a derivative of coconut. Uh, it also actually is in mother's milk, too. Your, your mother's, if you've been breastfed as children... Uh, naturally, you know, the human body will produce monolaurin, which is a compound. It's an amino. So what ends up happening is, is it helps to be able to is that colostrum? parasite. What's that? Colostrum? Is that what it's called? Like a pre-mother's milk? No, no it's um, the, the compound that I'm talking about is monolaurin, M-O-N-O-L-A-U-R-I-N. And it's also found in coconuts as well. But if you take coconut oil or if you actually buy the supplement monolaurin, that too can be able to kill parasites. I've been using it for, I don't know, more than a decade ago, you know, a decade now, when they suspected when I had GI issues, I went to a naturopath and they put me on monolaurin. So wow. uh, lauric acid. Is this it. over the counter um, or is this a... Uh... You need a prescription for yeah, it. Yeah, it's over the counter. Oh. No, I just put it into Google. Lauric acid or monolaurin. Yeah, there it is. Lauric acid. And oh, uh, yeah. you take that with some C, vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc. zinc. You know, the, these are all things. Did you, you ever take, have you ever taken zinc on an empty stomach? Thank you, but no thank you. I would never want to do that. That's I'd, like Birth City. <laughs> I didn't know that uh, <laughs> vitamins can make you puke. Oh, yeah. If you take it on an empty stomach, it oh, irritates yeah. your stomach lining. Yeah, because that's why they're called supplements. They're supposed to attach to food, the molecules. Uh, why don't they write this on the packaging? Like, well, they do say take with food, but it should be more. <laughs> should be more <laughs> they should write, you'll puke if you don't, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. On the topic of, of health and well-being. Um, uh, what's this, this whole thing that we're making here with uh, the hospitals here in New York State? You know, I, what, they, what was it last night at midnight? They just suspended like like literally thousands of healthcare professionals. Kekosa, like what's up with that? Well, yeah, th they might have they might have killed barely anybody, possibly never. 
who knows? But whatever, they're off the now there's the National Guards in there. I know. I don't understand what our, uh, you know, our governor, this, this, this uh, woman that has replaced Cuomo, I, I don't know what's going on with her head. I don't know. She's got some screws loose. Forgive she, me, but hey. She's it, hotter it than uh, Nancy like, Pelosi. Do this? She's like a, she's like a young, yeah. sexy Nancy Pelosi. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, 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 the, the dag have words. I got words. It doesn't make sense. It totally doesn't. We're here, you know, in the Buffalo, Niagara metropolitan area of New York. I'm on the other end of the state from you. And we got hospitals. You know, we're nowhere big as a metropolis as you are down in New York City. But, you know, we got hospitals on diversion. Can you imagine? We're, we're New York State, second largest city in Buffalo. And we got hospitals on diversion because there's no staff. Do, do, you, need a, do you need to have a, uh, do you need to show your ID to eat in restaurants? where you are no that no thankfully no no I mean, you're more than welcome to come up we'll do dinner I, I, i'll tell you might have it, to if i want to go out to eat <laughs> yeah seriously no you can walk into any restaurant you go and do whatever you want they say up here oh you got to wear a mask you know if you uh if you don't have a vaccine or whatever but people are like whatever most people know that there's like nothing to worry about we did a uh, a number of friends of mine on Facebook and I did something last night and I how, said, is anyone you, good at math? Not me, I, 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 math is like, no, but okay. So, so here's the math for everybody out there, right? Okay. If there are uh, 79 billion people in the world and 219 million have caught COVID, then what percentage of the world has caught COVID? What is the percentage? So again, there are seven, 79 billion. Okay, think about billion. Billion is a huge number. Can you, I can't, I, I, most I, I'm sorry, you're talking about that. numbers I can't comprehend, but. Okay, so we get, I'll put the numbers in the chat room, right? It's 79, okay, with eight zeros. That's 79 billion. There you go, right? Good. Do the math, okay? Chicky, and that's then, way too round somebody, of a number. There's got to be like 79 billion one. Okay, there you go, right? <laughs> I know. And then there's 219 million, okay, people who have caught, they said, cases in the world, right? Okay. But what percentage of oh. the planet, and see if anybody could figure this out. Just take uh, the zeros out, right? What percentage of the planet? Or something? Oh, I know the answer because I cheated. I, I, I cheated. I went on to, uh, it was a slacker. <laughs> we, when we were doing this earlier on and uh, we cheated we went on the internet and we grabbed one of those calculators think my bob but uh, if you guys can figure it out right if you haven't, if you haven't figured it out right it's 2.7 percent of the planet okay has gotten covid do you think 2.7 percent of the planet deems the level of urgency wait what do you think Really, only two point seven percent of us have had COVID. I thought that number. Sh I wish it was higher. Two point seven percent. Now, okay. Remember, I'm, I said two hundred. I'm part of the two point oh, seven. I've had, million, had COVID. Right? Right. You had COVID also. Yeah, I have antibodies. I'm I'm part of the uh -huh. unvaxed anti uh, antibody crowd. Okay. All right. Well. Okay. So get this. In the planet, now remember, 219 million of, of the entire planet, okay, of 79 billion people, there were only 4.55 million deaths. What's the percentage on that looking like? Well, I can tell you right now, it's, it, that's actually, uh, when I do the math in my head and I take that number and I shift it over there and then I throw this over here, it's going to be around, uh, is it like one? Not even, not even, not even. It's 0 0.056969. That's the exact number that I calculate. That's the percentage. It's 0 0.05. Okay, 0 0.05 percent of the world has died of COVID. So that's less than one percent. Now we're we're looking at how many cases there were. How many cases? Okay, in the entire world, 2.7% of the planet has, has been cases. 
Yeah, but okay, okay. Wait, what you what you're trying to tell me right now is that people are dying, right? Now, yeah. if you could if you could save one person, and that's why we have electric cars now. Think about that. <laughs> yeah, I know, really. Seriously. Oh my. Uh, oh my. Uh Chicky, I would hate to distract you from the uh our current uh topic, but we're running kind of short on time and I want to get through these other questions. Can I ask you another question from uh Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. I think this is this is the last the last one we could read here. We got hi Chicky. My husband loves my lasagna, but I want to become an actress and move to LA. What's the best way to let him down gently? From curious one. Huh. Okay. So let me make sure I make sure I've got this right. Okay. So uh, okay. So they, one partner wants to move to Los Angeles. Yes. And the other partner doesn't want to move. It sounds like the other partner likes lasagna. Yeah, that has nothing to do with the price. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't get so it either. I didn't, it, I just, I'm just reading. This is this is this, this <laughs> is all about. This is again a power and control struggle. It, it's my way or the highway. You're giving your partner an ultimatum. You know, I, you have to negotiate. Everything is a friggin' negotiation in, in the world. It so really if is. you're not going to go and negotiate with your partner uh, about this, you know, and say, all right, let's keep our home here if we can afford it, right? But maybe spend half the year, you know, on assignment in Los Angeles and half the year there. So this is why people have multiple homes. You know, they fly back and forth. This is why airplanes, it takes four hours to get from coast to coast, right? So. You know, there's lots of ways to be able to negotiate it. But if your partner doesn't want to be able to, you know, go at all and doesn't want to travel, I mean, there's got to be a negotiation. That has to be admitted. You have to find a, a new solution to an old problem, which is it's not your way or the highway. This is not a power and control struggle. It's not my partner must oh, bend to me. This is the reason why all so, relationships, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, you, you can have power and control struggles. But there's also a lot of, people that resolve in divorce because there's no negotiation and they don't want to negotiate and if you don't want to negotiate then you're going to be sitting there when you're 80 years old alone that's what's going to happen you're going to be sitting there old and alone if you don't learn to negotiate that's the bottom line to that you have to have good negotiation skills and you have to be fair and you have to be honest well what <laughs> i have a question you probably can't answer because we would have to look it up but uh what percentage of Americans have been divorced? I have to look it up. <laughs> it's, it's, do you, is it more or less than have died from COVID? Uh, oh, my God. Uh, um, it says here, um, let's see here, almost 50% of all marriages in the United States will end in divorce or separation. Well, you, you know, uh, kids don't get married, though. Kids can't get married or have divorces. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know a lot of couples that were together for a very what? long time. So if it's 50 percent and then how many marriages yeah. are in. But that's still. It's a weird it's a high question. number. It's a ridiculous. It's a ridiculously high number. Not only that, but also it is um, it's disturbing because. You end up having all of these people. And just remember, there's a lot of people that stay married for the sake of the children as well. So they may stay married, but uh, they don't want to break apart the family or they, they have to save face. Maybe there's a religious reason why they have to stay together. You know, there's a lot of different reasons why the other 50% are staying together. Oh, Maybe it's yes. good negotiation skills. Maybe it's, uh, you know, not wanting to divorce because it's embarrassing. Maybe there's a religious reason. Maybe there's family pressures. There can be a number of different things. So, so my math is going to be off, but it's, uh, I'm reading that there's 62 million married couples, and that means there's a possibility of 30 million divorces. Oh, yeah, divorce is good business. If you're a divorce attorney, maybe you're in the money. <laughs> I'll tell you that. It, it doesn't... You, you don't have to go to law school to become an attorney. You just have to pass the bar. There you go. So if you, know, if you need a new job, <laughs> for all of you out there with the sounds of my voice that are contemplating your next career, become a divorce attorney. You'll have so much money, you won't know what to do with it. You might decide to get yourself a, 
home in Los Angeles and a home in New York, and you, you can fly back and forth and every weekend. And you'll always have enough money. Have Have you ever been to Los Angeles? I've never been to. I have. I, I've traveled a little bit, but I've never yeah. been to LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to Los Angeles numerous times. Definitely. I, I worked in the entertainment industry for many, many years. I was the rock psychic. I had the rock psychic show. I was on Galaxy 19 television. And so uh, back and forth and being able to meet up with all different celebrities. I'm a celebrity life coach, celebrity psychic. I, I work with a lot of celebrities. If I were to be able to go to, I guess, the list of all the famous people that I've met, I it would say it, it would be ridiculous, a ridiculous number of people. I mean, I haven't read for all of those people, but I still like I got around. <laughs> oh, Chicky, hello. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I was, uh, <laughs> I was just building a very uh, uh, weird scenario in my head because I'm very high. Uh, but I was going to ask you if what coast is better, east or west coast? East coast, in my humble opinion, I, okay. I've been on both coasts. So I, I've lived in different places in the United States. And I'll tell you. If you said West Coast, I was going to hang up on you. <laughs> oh, man. That's all right. That's all right. I, I wouldn't do you. that anyway. I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, it it would have been funny, though. It's okay. <laughs> That's okay. You, you, I'll, I'll ask God to pardon you the next time we get into a meeting. No, I, it'll be fun. So, um, yeah, definitely New York. And uh, this whole Northeastern corridor, if you will, like uh, New York. Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, Vermont, you know, all, all, this whole region over here, even parts of Canada going north, it's just nothing beats this area. We got, we get snow, but who cares? It's just snow. It's not earthquakes. Well, why is the, so I, I like, I like the East Coast because I, I do, I like, I like the ocean. I like a place that has the ocean. So that would be either West or East. If, if I was taken away from yeah. water, I'd be very upset. I feel, uh, Co yeah. cosmically i yeah like yeah I, I i got pretty upset when i was like oh i gotta go to like the buffalo metropolitan area but then we got all the great lakes up here we got all that fossil that's water true. so yes. that it's beautiful up here so even though i'm not at the ocean i can still go to the lakes and it, it's not as turbulent as the ocean and we don't get the hurricanes these are all extremely good points in picking where to go uh yeah definitely <laughs> There's another thing I'll tell you really quickly. I get a little bit into astrology. And oh. I ended up coming up here by using a technique called astrocartography, which goes ahead and I, I can do this for any of my clients to be able to tell you where you would fare the best anywhere in the world. Uh, let you know whether or not like a particular area you've been drawn to your entire life, if you would move there and live there. Would you have greater prosperity? Would you be able to find love? You know, all these types of things. And it has a lot to do with the date and the time and the place where you were originally born. And then there's all these grids that go across the earth with the longitudes and the latitudes and where all the planets were situated. You know, it's astrology stuff. I need to talk to you about where I should go because I have, I have, a, I have, a, I have a thought in my head about where I want to be. And if what you tell me after what we would talk about turns out to be the same place, I'm, I'm going. Okay. All right. Ah, uh, the uh, ch chicky. We're we're coming to almost the the one a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You have yeah. been in, incredible to talk to. I, I've thank you, thank you to Ducky. I think Ducky has introduced me to you. Ha, have you known uh, Ducky in the chat for for? For any amount of time, <laughs> uh, yeah, a couple of months, a couple of months. He's definitely a good man. And he's definitely. I'm quite grateful for him, and I'm also grateful for you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, would you ever come back on? Sure, I got plenty. I, I have a list of things that I was going to talk to you about tonight, and it's just we, you and I could talk for hours about stuff, and I could tell you stories, and I could tell the audience stories, and I can tell you guys things. That, that just would make your jaw drop, you know? I, I have so much to share. And I invite all these to be able to join me on the North American Psychic and Paranormal Network every weekend. We have Napin TV Live starting at 2 p.m. on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we go all the way through to about 10 o'clock at night and sometimes even later. Uh, but we have programming all day, people hanging out in the video chat. So 
definitely check out the chat section and nap and tv live uh friday saturday and sundays as uh, everybody's welcome it's a great it's a great community of people they're uh, <laughs> a lot less trolls than in the sewer i'll say that uh do you do you, do you know the north american plant phenotyping network <laughs> You know what? It's funny. I used to own napping.com and I let it go. And it, it's so funny because after I let it go, I guess they grabbed it. And I, I, I think it's absolutely hilarious how many times people will Google <laughs> these, this, this, you know, whatever it is, you know, plants or whatever. And how many times people probably make jokes and be like, hey, this is paranormal. You know, I just think it's so funny because we talk about a lot of science, you know, and it wouldn't be funny. It, it, I, I would find it funny if a lot of the people that work with them, I once upon a time worked with because I've worked with some of the top scientists in the world throughout my entire career because I do have a big science background. So it, it wouldn't surprise me. It just wouldn't surprise me if their people and me overlap. They're probably like, who's Chicky Hot? Wait a minute. Hold, them <laughs> hold on. Oh, my God. Nah, nah, nah. We got stories for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's it. That's it. Definitely. Well, it's certainly been a pleasure. Thank you so very much. And thank you to the audience. And, you know, I got to be able to tell you, you know, I I've seen trolls. Okay. Your, your <laughs> trolls in your chat room are lightweight. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Yeah, 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 everybody in the chat will be is telling me, oh, this chat is troll, this troll, like, what troll? They're like, they like <laughs> watch, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's, that just means they're listening. <laughs> yeah, nah, lightweight. They're lightweight. <laughs> That's all right. It's oh, all good. Man. Uh, I, I, uh, I will definitely talk to you very soon, Chicky. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, a pleasure and an honor. Thank you. And, I'll talk to you again. Uh, would you like to say good night to the internet? Indeed. Internet, good night and stay blessed. One and all, thank you for tuning in to Nick the Rat Radio with Chicky Hot. Yes. Good, good night, Chicky. Oh, man. That was, that was an experience. And uh, thank you, Ducky, for... Uh, making that connection actually happen. Uh, let's see if Nick the Rat can continue on with the show in his uh, very drunken state, which he can do. But first, we're going to play a song by Netmia, Next Generation. We're going to come back. We're going to thank some people. There was a package in the P.O. box, which I can't wait to open. Let's see what happens later. But we got Net Netmia, Next Generation. We still have a lot more show to go. It's the internet. We can do whatever we want. I'm sorry. Here we go. Thank you, Chicky.
Oh man, that was. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. That was that was so refreshing to just to talk to somebody and and be able to and be able to talk to them about whatever you wanted to talk to them about and and not have them like flip out or freak out on you. Uh, there's a couple of weird questions from the audience and stuff, but you know, it's, where are you? Where are the sewer people? Uh, we have to thank some people now. Uh, first, before I thank people, I would just like to say, uh, not only has Ducky introduced me to Chicky, the rat, I should be ratty, ratty, Ducky, Chicky, be a, a trio, we could be like the Beatles. Um, sh uh, when I when I say the P.O. box, he mentioned this before, and, and I was too drunk to understand what he was saying, but then when I kind of sobered up, I understood it. He was saying, he was saying that uh, when I say the P.O. box, I say, so what I, what, it, it's, it's nine zero five four nine, but I say ninety because it's nine zero nine ninety five four nine. But he's saying I'm saying ninety five four nine, so it's ninety five. Like, I, and it took it took a while for me to understand what he was trying to say. He was saying you're saying ninety five, but I was saying like ninety nine zero ni ninety nine ninety ninety. 90 not 90 the not 9 a b or c but 90 where's hurt where's hurt my brain but i did get two things in the p.o box they're over here one 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 looks like a juicy one looks like a juicy fish it's nine it's it's actually zero hold on one second i took a picture of the p.o box i'm gonna put a picture up on the screen really quick of the p.o box I could find it. Here it is. I'm going to put this. Let's see if this works. So that that's the actual P.O. box right there. It's 090549. Brooklyn, New York, 11209. You can put Nick or whatever on there. Uh, let's let's open up this stuff first. I, I have been drinking. I've... I'm... I'm, I'm beers and... All right, first let's open up this this envelope right here. I think this might from from the there's a leading O. What are you talking about? Yeah, there is a leading O. I don't know. That's why I, I pronounce it wrong. Uh this is from um uh, Sir Mike Roch, PhD. He's my doctor. Uh two of three coded payments. B U L L S hit bullshit. Zero dollars and forty two out of one hundred. A forty two cent check. should block all this out but it's it's right there it's a real check and i will be cashing it into the dark sewer bank <laughs> but this this is what's really interesting right here this is a fat one there might be uh yeah check for 42 i will be i will cash that fuck thank you doctor this is the one that introduces me. Uh, intro, uh, there's, there's like, look at all those stamps on there. For five, four, nine, giant, giant sized five, four, nine on there. Let's, let's open this guy. Up. My content is way too softcore for for Twitch. I, I've been watching Twitch. There's 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 people that suck suck their microphones off. Uh, 
I, I got a P.O. box, though. Let's see what we got here. If I die, I hope I don't die. It's a folder, not a scruncher. Show or not a grower. Oh, it's a it's a yellow envelope. It looks like it says it's from uh, the Umbrella Corporation. What's in here? Metal by M. Andrew Jones. This looks fucking metal. Look at that. It's like the Black Album here. Oh, there's a, there's a secret love letter. Let me read this first. It might be like, thank you for your courage. has a secret letter inside. Hello, friend. Thank you for accepting a promotional copy of my book. As an independent artist, I have to be crafty with my marketing. So although this copy cost you nothing up front, it's not free. Instead, I give you a value-for-value value proposition because I cannot live my dream of being a successful author by simply giving my product away. This is like one of the notes that you get on uh, when you're walking around in the streets. You get one of these right here, and they just hand it to you. And then they don't usually give you a book, though. If they give you a book, they'd want it, they'd want it back. But I'm not giving this back. I'm going to read this book. Well, let's read the rest of this note here. Value for value, you ask? How does this work? First, read the book so you know what the value it has for you. Did you find it entertaining, enlightening, or informative? Don't worry. I'm going to be giving you a full review of this book because it's it's, it's 63 pages. Fair, fair size. Then I'm going to steal all your ideas and resell it for value for value. No, I'm just... Well, I might. You know, once you read something, you can't ignore what you have taken in. Like, Chicky is now a part of all of us. You can't say it's not, because you have heard the word of Chicky. In the end, no gestures do small. Andrew, I shall read this book and I shall let you know I will let the people know thank you so much for the P.O. Box donations let's see if we have any donations on the uh... if you go to nicktherat.com slash donations I don't know there's a donate button somewhere over there uh, I shall find it in my Hold on, am I, uh, I'm really drunk right now. Uh, Chicky, I understand how you have opened up that, that, that doorway into this other place. And, and it took alcohol to get there because I, I have this door open a little bit too often. Let's read this here, PayPal donation. I read initials and the amount. We have Mac. I do remember a Mac. Mac, you know who you are, Mac, with 420. Thank you so much, Mac. We have KS, KS with 420. Thank you so much, KS. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, KS. KS, I think, is maybe new. I'm drunk too, Nick the Rat. We can make it through. We can do it, Joe. You and me. You and me, Joe. DV. DV with 420. 
Thank you, DV. What's going on with the view on my my cat? My, I'm looking at myself while I'm looking at myself. Nick the Rat, I want to take you to an island beyond there. Oh, oh. Cheeky meditation is one of the hardest things in the world. I, I wanted to ask you about how you meditate. I wanted to ask you. I got, I got this whole document over here. I don't know if you can see it. This... There's so many words right here that I just wanted to add. Uh, wait, hold on. Let's get back to where we were, though. I got to continue on with... We have AM with $1 million. Bye. We're, we're going. We're going. We're leaving. AM, thank you so much. $1, one million dollar roonies. You know what? For a million dollars, I could probably... Uh, Maybe get like a different microphone or something. We could we could check it out. We got one more donation here. TM with three dollars and thirty three cents. Thank you for the three three three. That's I can't wait to read metal. I can't wait to read metal. I can't wait to cash my forty two cent check. And thank you everybody else that has donated. Thank you, uh, Chicky, one more time. Just thank you. <sighs> Amazing. We let's let's listen to a song. We're gonna come back. We got more stuff. We have more stuff. It's one in the morning. You guys are late night warriors. Thank you for hanging out. We got more stuff after we listen to Sakura Lee with "Change the Beat." A modern day marble, but terrible, better horrible. When he grabbed the mic from Sonic, crushed up all his metal carpals. He said he ain't mean it, totally by accident. Had to One second here. Did I do what I did last time? I have been playing the wrong music all fucking night. You probably did say something. <laughs> this is the face of embarrassment. <sighs> I have to play all of them, Servo. Servo, I have to play all the. I have to, I, I. We're going to start from song number one tonight. The confused composer. What's what's this song called, Ducky? Confused composer, what? Uh, the nights last forever. Diane! Fuck!
Hey everybody, welcome back to I'm a dope. I'm a I'm a I'm a I was playing last week's music on this week's show. I could this this is why editing is stupid. It's it it you don't you don't get this these uh fleeting moments of what the fuck just happened? Mothballs still taste pretty nasty. What? Joe, we're back. Don't worry, Joe. I'm going to let the audience take a... <laughs> it's very authentic. Until you're listening to it and you're like, what the fuck? What's, what's going on here? Why is, why is this show... Why is this not Amy Goodman talking about stuff? Why isn't there any jump cuts? Why is this guy playing music that happened last week? What, um, should we listen to a TV segment, another song, because we still have eight more to go, um, Zindu, or, uh, a voicemail, or, uh, raccoon repellent? Ah. <sighs> Sex is too powerful. Man, I have so many more questions for Chicky. I should just bring Chicky back on. I'll be like, we're going we're gonna to talk to you for 10 more hours here because I have so many questions. And she she just has answers, which is great. Change to into a cuter. Okay, we're going to play some music here. I'm going to change into a cuter outfit. Maybe show off some of my, my titties. And I'm going to have the throat on the mic. Right after this, we're going to listen to a another song really quick because we have Baradine with First Date and with the throat mic and the new outfit, it's going to feel like one. <sighs> Nick the Rat Radio I can hear the clock never end. A ticking and talking. Everything's peacefully dead. I can see old granny still sitting there rocking, watching the neighbors go by. Hello, everybody. Welcome welcome back to Nick the Rat Radio. We just played song number two, and we're up to uh, 1.30 in the morning. And shit's just falling apart in the sewer. 
we had Chicky Hot on earlier, and hopefully we shall have her on again. Uh, amazing guest, amazing uh, stories. My my bumps are still goosed. That's all I could say about that. Um, we're going to listen to some voicemails. I think the, the phone line is working. That was the only thing working during this show. 917-719-5923. Hey, Nick. Oh, my God. So I've seen the fucking movie trailer preview bullshit for Dune. And hey, what happened there? What, what what the hell was that? Oh, sorry. Okay, here we go. About 50 dozen fucking times. It's unimaginative, and it's the same fucking bullshit when you read the goddamn book. I don't need to hear some rich bitch's bastard review of it. I mean, granted, there's no other goddamn reason to go to a movie theater. Maybe that uh, tit... Titane, watching a stripper, like, skinny white girl twerking, and it's kind of uninteresting also. And it's a fucking R-rated drama, so, you know, you're just going to get, just going to get blue balls if you try and watch it and enjoy it. And there's too many goddamn cut scenes. Anyway, so that movie's going to fucking suck, unless you're, well, you kind of are. But anyway, um, uh, so, Dune, um, I mean, hasn't that already been done? And the book series wasn't that good either. Oh, Chicky. I mean, oh. Chicky, do you, where have you ever seen uh, Twin Peaks? I piss in the sand. Or on my little rat buddy as he scurries around the floor, trying to avoid the hot shower. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Chiggy, while you were telling, uh, when you were telling me stuff, I, I, I knew it, I knew it. While you were telling me stuff, I had like four or five questions per, per like every minute you were talking, but I just, I just had to let you keep on going on because I was enthralled, but I had so many questions. I knew you, I knew you listened to, I knew you listened to Twin Peaks, listened to you saw wait, you saw only saw one episode of Twin Peaks. Now 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 I'm curious. I only saw one episode. I th I thought you were gonna be definitely like a David Lynchy uh David Lynchian uh, fan. I have a list. Don't worry. Uh and that I think that was the only voicemail we got. You can also email me at nick at nicktherat.com and uh, put Gas Blast in the title, and I shall read that on the air. I think we have one of those. Uh, I got my gas bill. Uh, all right, Gas Blast. I, I really should pre-read pre these things here because this is just... This is just a, 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 a caller, listen to this. Like, if you got this in your email box, what would you do? All right, my name is Nick with soybean-sized testicles and a pecker as thick as the tip of my tail. If you enjoy grinding with me, let's share a pipe and in this deep, dark, and wet-as-fuck sewer. Love you, buddy. Now slam me and break that tail off inside of my urethra. Oh. Uh, I would block that. I'm, I'm reporting this uh, to the CIA. It was an email or is a text message. This is an email. I, I'm gonna. I would report that to the police. You're going. You're gonna be reported to the. He's threatening, he's threatening to assault you, Nick. In my junk. Yeah, that's that's. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. I, I'd hope so. I would. I'd. I'd like to see that in like a fucking courthouse oh that would make the news man yeah you could you could go viral with that next thing you know, there's like 7 billion people listening to this show Bob, caller we're past that we're like at 10 billion right now 
We just uh, we just got a big advertisement yeah. in China recently. Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, Ch- Chicky probably uh, is going to contribute to the, you know. She's a rock star, you know. Do you want to know what's uh? You want to know something really sad about me and how my brain works? But uh, before no, before the <laughs> I'm going to tell you anyway. Before Go the. Ahead. Uh, the inter- uh, the uh, me talking with Chicky, uh, I saw that she was a rock, uh, a rocks, um, psychic, psychic, a rock psychic. So I thought it was kind of like she spoke to rocks. Like I thought she would get energies. I'm sure she would get energy from rocks though, because rocks have frequencies. I'm not, and they... I'm not sure. Yeah, I, that's, I'm not qualified to answer that question. But but perhaps. then she but then she said, "Let's listen to some Slayer." And I was like, oh, I get it now. Did she say that? That was, that was, that was all <laughs> off. That was uh, behind the I don't think the I ever heard. Yeah, I don't that think was behind that the was listened to some play. Yeah, I could be wrong. All right, I'm, I might have uh, psychically controlled Chicky to listen to Slayer. And then I probably projected my own thoughts of this. Like, color. you like mayonnaise, right? Oh man, you have no idea. Dukes, Dukes mayonnaise all day, every day. I'm telling you. I, I, get... I, I, I shan- it, instead of using shampoo, I just throw mayonnaise in my hair. I should get a, I should get a, a check from Mr. Mayo. He doesn't understand what I'm doing for his industry, for his culture. Anyway, I just wanted to call in and say, uh, it, it's been a great show. Um, I think everybody agrees, except for maybe gummy nerds. Who? He's kind of being a big troll there for a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think, he, think he's okay. He's fine. I know he's, you know, he pisses some people off. It's, uh, he, as long as he didn't piss Chicky off. Chicky, Chicky actually called him out. He's like, you know what? There's, there's trolls with bigger guns than. True. But why well, don't you come I to my will, chat room uh, and what? tell everybody how small your uh, your amygdala is? Like, why would you do that? Who, nobody cares. Is that what happened? Yeah, he was just like, my amygdala is small, my amygdala is small. You know, he's, he's not doing anything. No kidding. Yeah. It's yeah, fine, Gummy. Your amygdala like, could, we, we'll massage weird. you. We could rub, we could rub your amygdala. It's just weird. Yeah. All right, uh, caller. Um, <laughs> well, it was, it was great talking to you. So, yeah, 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 definitely, definitely great, great show again. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, uh, Chicky. Yep, peace. Caller is very familiar. We got a lot more show to go. Let's just let's hop into this next song. Let's uh sock hop into it with uh Top Flow Productions and Ray of Nightlight. Did we just listen to this?
thank you, Atlas Ran Gaming, with the subscription with Prime 21 minutes ago. And Gene Witch with the resub for one month at tier two. They've been subscribed for 15 months. Wow. Reading Twitch donations is stale as fuck. No wonder people have to suck off their microphones to keep an audience there. I'm just joking. Thank you for the free uh, bandwidth, uh, Jeff Bezos. Mwah. Thank you, Jeff Bezos. Wait, what's going on? Something weird happening to the signal. Can wash up. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that Makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you be evil a victory win? There's wonder, wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. There is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from a nail's vein, and sinners flood beneath the flood, lose all their guilt and sin, lose all their guilt and sin, lose all their guilt and sin, and sinners flood beneath the flood, lose all their guilt. I, had, I felt the need to commune with God today. It's something I really miss more than anything is partaking with my brothers and sisters there with me. Some more information about the program. Hello. Hi. Hi, this is Mark Allen, one of the accounts manager from Death the America. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you doing? Um, good, thanks for asking. And do you understand what the lady said before? Something about uh, canceling my debt. Yeah, today you're getting a death elimination on your credit card up to 70 to 80 person, okay? Oh. How are you all right now and all this card's going to be eliminated, all right? Oh, that's amazing because I got $69,000 in debt. That puts me right under that limit. Uh, all right. And how many cards do you have total? Uh, Three. Three credit card. And on which credit card do you think you carry the major balance on? Uh, it's my, my MasterCard. I use that one for the hookers and blow. That's around like 50K. Uh, so you can blow up, blow a dick? Uh, I, after I do a lot of coke, I sometimes blow dicks. It gets me all hyped up. Hello? Sir? Where's your, where's your dick? I can't find it. It's, maybe I should use my other credit card to 
by a magnifying glass. <sighs> Hello? Sir? Tractor pull, engine blown. That is what's in store for you if you go out there into the big bad world with your tally whacker trying to get your willy wet and you don't have the instruction manual. Bronze Age Pervert was responding to some tweet about how sex needed to be safer and Bronze Age Pervert said that sex is not supposed to be safe. Sex is not supposed to be safe. It's not supposed to be fun. It is a dangerous meddling with the inside of your mind and it is one of the most primal forces that there is. That's a primal instinct. And when you're playing, playing whack-a-mole, when you're playing marbles, operation. when you're playing operation, and there's pussy, real pussy at stake, and there's real lives at stake, okay, it's not a game. But that's my, that's my two cents about it, is that um, meddling with the primal forces of nature is not good idea. I'd say, I would say that the goal is ultimately to find someone that you uh, you trust and that you enjoy being around and who makes your life easier and who you can get off with without 10 different types of jellies and ticklers. Girls don't have to have game. Girls don't have to have... Yeah. And true. they don't have to have any, any like, do, sex skills. How's it going, y'all? Um... I just wanted to uh, address my um, R. Kelly video. Um, um, I know I've upset some of you guys and um, some of you are disappointed, but... <laughs> <laughs> Wait! <laughs> okay, okay, I can't. Niggas thought I was about to apologize. <laughs> Y'all niggas thought I was about to apologize for making a joke? <laughs> some of these niggas out here are more mad than the females are. You need to pull your panties out your ass, nigga. R. Kelly is guilty as fuck, nigga. But bump and grind is still bump and grind. And every time that song come on, it will be saying at the top of my lungs. And I know those niggas out there talking about... If you listen to R. Kelly, then that means you support R. Kelly, which means you contribute to pedophilia. Shut up, bitch. R. Kelly ain't shit. We all know that. But Chocolate Factory and TP2 is a classic. R. Kelly could kill my whole family. I'm gonna be at the funeral line. I wish that I could hold you now. Oh, I, I wish. What's it like to be a comedian in 2016? It's the exact same way as it was in 2006 and in 1996. It's a completely exaggerated. They make it seem like you walk into the club and there's people out there with signs and they're throwing like the stuff East. at you. Yeah. They, they aren't. It's, it's just completely media manuf manufactured like you could literally genetically alter the food you can create a heroin epidemic they're not going to bring that up but if you do a caitlin jenner joke right every <laughs> night for th for two yeah. years and one person complains there's a chance that they'll blow it up it's just it's basically it's like lazy journalism it's an easy story mm. and uh you know, and then, the, and then the people who get offended are, are very, they're childish people. They're not adults. Because they'll sit there and they'll let a hundred subjects goes by and it's all a joke. And then it gets to their neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's a statement. And you're up there like, you know, getting legislation enacted for some sort of law to make their life yeah. more miserable. Whatever their point is. There's no explaining these things. Many people on psilocybin report the rustling at the side of the room. There seems to be a periphery about 15 feet out where the scurriers are in action. And they just move around and they never come closer and they never get further away. And they just scurry and scurry. You say, oh, there are rats. And gee, there are a lot of rats. And, uh... So you're dead now, shit. Going to hell, straight from your marijuana jungles, straight from your lies, your lies, your lies. You drop dead fucking. It suits you well. You go to hell. We'll go to hell. I'll go to hell too, but I know I'm damned, and you never knew. So you weren't ready. 
cold bell. <laughs> For me, it's easy. From hell to hell, I'm not dancing in marijuana jungles. I live in concrete mazes, stone and glass. Hard like my heart, sharp and clean. With no romantic allusions to changing the world. I don't lie to myself that love can cure because I know I'm alone. And you fought that every day you lived. You lied, died, you lied. You go to hell. It suits you well. Wombat Noise Audio, a Walton Port Rye. Servo is all over it, like a filthy monster. He should have messaged me on the back channel that I was playing last week's songs, though! It's not your problem. I've done that before, too. Good point. Go back and update the chats on the uh, I think the rat chats on the SoundCloud with the uh, updated song numbers for the week here on 302 and 303 of Nick the Rats. Welcome back. This is 302. I don't even know what episode we're on. Shit, it, things start blurring together. Right? Uh, the more you kind of do it, it kind of just gets more blurred together. Uh, let's listen to, you know, what, what will separate us right now from reality that exists outside of reality, which is the reality that they try to tell you is true. Yeah. Time blurs are waggy. We got Zindu. <laughs> Uh, hey, testing everybody, testing. Hi, yes, this is Zindu coming to you from the Dark Sewer News Network. Now, I must say, that interview with Chicky Hot was delicious. It was great, Nick. I, I can't believe 
that you lasted that long. <laughs> you, <laughs> uh, boy, I, I killed me. I killed me. And I'm just saying that joke about Nick because usually when I give him like, I have like eight hands. I use like four or five of them on him. He's he's already he's finished in like seconds. I just look. He looks at my hands. Wait, you know this. I got. I think it's in my contract not to talk about uh, our sex escapades. Let's uh, let's try something new this week. You know, instead of doing the news or talking about sports or politics or uh, uh, I don't know, uh, let's do the weather. Yeah, why not? Let's uh, let's pull up the well, good old weather map here. Let's get a, a weather map of. Uh, why isn't there like a worldwide weather map? Is there like a an Earth map like where where you can just like like it's a globe and it spins and you can see the weather on it? That would be that would be pretty cool. But I, I think it's because uh, like weather in China is uh, illegal for America to know or something. Let's let's uh, let's grab this weather map. Let's just check it out over here. We're gonna we don't want it to know our location. This weather map and that's probably actually this this is exactly what I was talking about. All right. Well, in Russia, it's currently zero. Wait, what? This is not. A, this is not. What? What is this? I don't know what's going on with temperature. Yes, I want the temperature. What? I don't know what's going. It's not. It's definitely not. Wait, it's not 17 degrees in New York right now. This weather map's off. This is way off. Uh. Oh, maybe 17 C. How do I change it from C's to F's? I don't want no. I don't want no F's. I mean, I don't want no C's in my shit. Jeez, I barely know what the F's are. Uh, yeah. On Oktar, we use uh, G's. But uh, let's see here. I guess, you know, this I can't change it from... Okay, well, whatever. Let's just do it in C's. New York, it's 17 C's. Boston, 13. Houston, 26 C's. Vancouver, 11 C's. Uh, Bethai, uh, Alaska... Six C's. Uh, we got Inuvik, Canada. I don't even know what there is a fucking place called Inuvik. There, negative four. Uh, Qanon in Greenland. It's a negative eight. It's really cold out there. Let's see where is it hot. Where is it hot? Uh, we got some places. Uh, let's see. The hottest place looks like it's in uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, we got thirty in in Budta. I think I smoked some Bud Tile last night out of Nick's stash. Don't tell him. <laughs> uh, we got we got uh, Hawaii with uh, Honolulu. We got 29 C's there. Uh, Pakistan, about 30 C's. Uh, where, what else we got here? We got Hong Kong, 31 C's. Gee, that's a, uh, what is that? That's fucking, that's like 200, 200 degrees Fahrenheit or some shit, right? Uh I wish I wish there was ways to change it. This, I don't know what the hell I'm even saying. I don't even know why I'm doing the weather. You guys are listening to a fucking podcast. <laughs> this is going to be relevant for about five seconds. Uh, but I guess you know, one day in the future, when the whole fucking map is just like fifty C's or some shit, you'll be like, you'll be like, oh my god, there was negative one C. This is this is a weird timeline. Let's go back to that timeline. But you won't be able to because the Earth will be destroyed. And that's okay in my book. Anyway, this is Zindu. I'll be back a little bit later with uh, a little bit more, maybe weather. I don't know. Maybe I'll find the F. I'm going to dig around and try to see if I can change these C's to F's. Uh, otherwise, you know, have a have a fucking, have a good fucking little bit of time before we come back. I, I'm sure there's going to be some music coming on right now. If I if I knew, I don't, have the, I don't have the track list, but get ready. Strap your shoes on because here comes... Actually, it might, not, it might actually be advertisements. Nick's been uh, clamoring for money lately. <laughs> he's, hey, I don't think he's going to get any of those big ad sponsorships with uh, with with weather podcast. This, <laughs> this has been Zindu bringing down Nick the Rat's podcast from the inside by reporting on the weather instead of the news. We'll be back later. Strawberry cornberries, blueberry cornberries, cranberry cornberries. No matter what your favorite cornberry is, we have it here on the Dark Sewer Network. At the Dark Sewer Network, we only grow the juiciest, flavorful cornberries and ship them straight from our warehouse into your family. 
call 917-719-5923 to order a spindle of our most popular corn berries for $69.99. Gooseberry corn berries, boysenberry corn berries, huckleberry corn berries. What is a corn berry? It's like corn on the cob with berries for kernels. All of our corn berries might be GMO free and might have no artificial growth hormones. Corn berries are high in antioxidants and show up in your shit. Call 917-719-5923. Recipe books are also available. Call now. Corn berries show up in your shit. Uh, everything's new and it's old. TrueComic.com presents. Did you see that? It's just old Doc Truman appearing out of the blue with a ray gun. Track to work, y'all. In post depression America. Five young, smart people shirt limitations. Hey guys, we just have to be smart, and I have an idea. A spark ignites an invention. The five of us have invented new machines. Let's make them work together. To make what, my friend? Well, as a better kind of radio. One intention with broad consequences. I discovered something years ago working on radios. One incorrect formula with unexpected results. A kind of vibration. <laughs> that's not radio, that's a doorway. <laughs> man, look out, he's throwing, he's throwing stuff, man. He's throwing stuff. Shut that off. Boy. Was that supposed to happen? That, that was definitely not supposed to happen. Was it? I, I, don't blame me. He, he, the other guy, he's... I don't know about the rest of you, but I want to try that again. And one will die. Creatures from the deep attack. You shoot, I fly. Hey guys, I got something left for you. Through combat.com. This one you can do about it. A monster will hunt him. This one will die. Shall kill him. And bunnies will die. Shut it off. Shut it off. Okay, I'll just switch it off. Where did the bunny go? The dinosaur ate him. Can we save him? The dinosaur ate him. Should I call a vet? Is everyone okay? The dinosaur ate the bunny. 1938 will never be the same. Through comment.com. Well, fuddle. I got something left for you. Well, what's that? Let's listen to AIK tracks with strange aeons. That was a strange advertisement. So it's two in the morning, everybody. Reality doesn't matter. Thank you for your free offer, Reverend Chicky Hot.
we're building a rat ship here. Heineken! You're building a rat ship here. All right, all right, all right. Fuck that shit. Truecomic.com presents. Did you see that? It's just old Doc Truman appearing out in the blue with a ray gun. Track to work, y'all. In post depression America. Five young, smart people shirt limitations. Hey guys, we just have to be smart, and I have an idea. A spark ignites an invention. Chicken woman. He's the chicken, not I. That sounds like a challenge to me, Jimmy. You're just a chicken. You're just a chicken. Please, Jimmy, don't start on me now. You look tired. You look old and ugly and washed up. Stop it, Jimmy. You don't understand anything. <sighs> what I don't understand is why anybody would want to take your picture. That's what I don't understand. Go oh, to it. You're just a freak, a weirdo. Behind your back, everybody laughs at you. They call you the chicken woman. That's why you look just like her. <laughs> Such a sweet boy. Don't step on that shoe. We'll have to pay for it. Clock, clock. One day, the chicken woman had chicks, and everybody stepped on them, because they were so ugly. Clock, clock. Don't talk to her like that. We still have trolls of film. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on his farm, he had some chickens, E-I-E-I-O. With a chick chick here, and a chick chick there, here a chick there, chick everywhere, chick chick. Oh, McDonald had a farm, E I E I O. Hey, L Dub, where have you been? We've been waiting forever for you. Well, I, uh, I went out to get a soda, and that's, uh, and, uh, I just now got back. But how'd you get that bandage on your forehead? Well, I, uh, went, uh, over to the comic shop, and I got a copy of Jungle Comics number four, and seeing as how it's got, uh, some... Artwork from someone that's a Nick the Rat listener. I figured I'd check it out. So what? Does I, you get a paper cut on your forehead? No, no, man. I went over to uh, uh, Slow Bob's place and, uh, well, you know, he takes a little time to explain things to this is taking time for you to explain it to me, man. How'd you get the bump on the cut on your forehead? Well, I'm I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. So Slow Bob, he was uh, he was in his living room, and I knocked on the door and went in, and and apparently he and his wife had been having a boiled over argument. Oh, boy. 
I said to myself, Slow Bob, what have you been doing? Well, I never figured it, but uh, apparently they've been fussing over money. Well, that's something that lots of couples fight over, right? I know I fight with everybody I know over paying me money for the hemp tortillas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's a deal. Slow Bob's wife came around the door facing with a butcher knife. A what? A butcher knife. And that's how you got the cut on your head? No, 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 no. I'm getting to that. Well, Slow Bob, he remembered something I told him a long time ago. If your wife ever pulls a knife on you, you know she is trying to fulfill her wifely duties. So get out a jar of mayonnaise and she will instinctively make you a sandwich. You're kidding me. You told that to a grown man? Yeah. And what's even wilder is he did it. Oh, no! Yeah. We spent the next three hours in the emergency room. We were kind of surprised that the doctor had never seen anything like this before. Seeing as how, you know, it was an emergency room. The doctor has never seen people fight and scrap. Well, what he had never seen before was a man walking in carrying his own head in a jar. What? Well, seems his wife had some extra mad and after she whacked at him a couple times, she stuffed his head in that mayonnaise jar. Oh, no! What happened to all the mayonnaise? Oh, don't worry. While the doctor was working on putting his head back on, I was making a sandwich. Oh, now that makes perfect sense. Well, little lizard buddy, I gotta tell you, it takes a long time to reattach a head, but it seemed like it took a lot longer to get his head out of that jar. Well, how long did it take to put his head in the jar? Well, that didn't take much time at all after his wife beat him up. Kind of left his head rather permeable. So, the jar broke and it cut your forehead? No, 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 no. I'm getting to that. So, while I was taking Slow Bob to the ER... My soda bottle was in the floorboard, and it was rolling around. And? Well, when I went to open it up, it had gotten all fizzy, and the cap blew off and dinged me right in the forehead. You're kidding me. Nope. Perfectly serious. You managed to cut your head on a pop bottle and you couldn't just say I cut my head on a pop bottle? Well, no, you kept asking me all these other questions I had to answer. Oh, I don't believe this. When did I become this straight guy? Well, look, lizard buddy. Let's just remind everybody to uh, go over to nicktherat.com and donate a couple of bucks. Just keep the lights on down at the sewer. I don't think that Nick actually makes any real money off of anything but paid six. I do not want to know. I do not want to know. He's going to get uh, lots of cuts on his forehead. Well, that would be from the mayonnaise jars, I would think. Hell yeah, he's got to have something to practice on. The words are almost interchangeable, magic and art. That um, We have the concept of high magic, 
which is magic where you don't know what you're doing, essentially. You're just doing whatever comes into your mind on the assumption that this is an instruction from the forces of the universe. Um, it's completely spontaneous. It's, it's not got any of the, the censorship of the rational conscious mind involved in it at all. The same could be said of great works of art that you don't know why you're doing them, you're not sure how you're doing them, or what purpose there is, it's just something where you feel a compulsion that is bigger than you, that is bigger than yourself. Um, so, yes, I'd say that if you want to understand magic, try thinking about art. If you want to understand art, try thinking about magic. In fact, I believe that both fields would be immensely enriched if they were only to take on the values of the other camp. That we would have magic that, if it was all seen as being a form of art, uh, where it might actually produce wonderful works of art. It might actually produce works like those of Austin Spare, or any of the other great Rosalind Norton. Um, people, great artists who've been connected with the occult over the years. Uh, that would give a purpose that modern magic is almost completely lacking. At the same time, if contemporary artists were to be drawing upon the ideas um, that are in magic, then we wouldn't be getting all of this empty, vacuous, conceptual shit that art seems to be frozen in at the moment, where, yes, conceptual art, but it's not, they're not even real concepts. They're concepts in the advertising sense. I blame Charles Saatchi for a lot of this. Um, but if you were to have that exchange of blood between art and magic, I think that both art and magic would be enriched immeasurably. They would both have a human purpose and would relate to the world in which we are actually all existing. Alex Productions Lo-Fi Hip Pop
Zindu. Uh, more Zindu. This is crazy. He hates us. Why is he sending more than one thing in here? Okay. Let's listen in. Might be good. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Zindu. Uh, we're going to be looking at a little bit of news here, I think, on the Dark Sewer News Network, part of the Nick the Rat Radio family. Uh, or some shit, I don't know. I don't know if I can know. Let's see here. We got, uh, where's where's my newsreader? All right, here's my newsreader. What, what do we got here? Major crypto exchanges stop letting Chinese users sign up after. Yeah, this is crazy, man. Uh, Bitcoin is no longer usable in China for like three Three of the major coin holders. I think you can still probably have like Shiba Inu coin or there or fucking, what is that, Doge? Uh, if you have it, they can't bust you. But if you, you spend it or buy it, then they can bust you. So it's, uh, I don't even know. It sounds like, it sounds like a great time to invest in, in fucking cryptocurrencies as the world powers are fucking duking it out with bullshit TikToks and shit. This is so weird. World War Three is fucking it's on happened on tiktok uh i guess that's how stupid people have become or you know at least people aren't getting blown up and fucking have uh, an experimental drug shot into their arm or, uh, anyway let's read the next the next news thing that we got on newsreader i don't know if this is this is, this is a pretty cool one this is coming from nationalgeographic.com we got stunning footprints pushed back human arrival in america's by thousands of years I don't know, those footprints look pretty big. I think this just proves Bigfoot, basically. A set of human footprints uncovered by researchers in the White Sands National Park, according to a new study, these tracks date between 21,000 and 23,000 years ago, a time when a massive ice sheets were believed to have blocked human migration into the Americas. Oh my God. So there was Americans here before America was America on this part of the American America. Holy shit. You know what that means. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean much. It's just another uh, question that we'll have to be uh, answering. Uh, all right, the ad blocker on National Ge- Geographic just kicked in, so uh, let, let's skip the rest of that story. If you want to find out more about that, don't look into it. It's just Nat Geo trying to make money off of you. Uh, we got Nick Cage spent a whopping hundred fifty million dollars of his fortune and ended up broke. How did he do it? Let's read Outsider dot com. In the in the in the fucking I know he bought that that pyramid in in New Orleans as his gravestone. I went there. I masturbated on it. I jizzed several times on that thing. So uh, I feel I feel immortalized. I think that's a good thing. Uh, it's weird that they he always gets mentioned as the national treasure star. Like, National Treasure was fucking amazing because Nick Cage was in it, but, like, leaving Las Vegas or something, you know, like a classical one, a classical Nick Cage movie, like that porn he did. Oh, wait, uh, anyway, let's, let's go on with this here. Uh, oh, there we go. They changed it up later. They call him the Con Air star, <laughs> the face-off star. Uh, let's see. Cage reportedly won the skull by outbidding Leonardo DiCaprio for a 67 million year old Tar- Tarbosaurus dinosaur skull. I wonder how much of that Tarbosaurus dinosaur skull was uh, paper mache and how much was actual bone. Uh, let's let's do a quick Nick Cage Tarbosaurus Nick Cage. But uh, I bet you like I bet you there was like one bone in it, and the rest was just paper mache. Uh, Nick Cage agrees to return stolen dinosaur skull to Mongolia. Apparently this, they didn't really mention that. Oh, wait, uh, wait, yeah. The skull is not in Cage's possession long. The cover was stolen, so uh, they took it back. Nick Cage purchase of a, he bought a serial killer's house uh, and, and then uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter, he chased down Brian Laundry. Did, did he find him? Who gives a fuck about this shit? Okay, you know what? I'm starting to get mad. I'm starting to get upset. Um, uh. Oh, God. Oh, I'm getting real mad. Here we go. This is going to be the final story before I get the fuck out of here. I'm going to leave you guys on a very sour note. And uh, I don't care. (laughs) You guys are humans and I'm not, so it doesn't matter. This is from CNBC. Climate psychologist says neither gloom and doom nor extreme solution obsessed optimism is the best way to discuss climate change productively. Oh, okay. There we go. 
she, what is a climate psychologist? Well, I, I just gotta look that up. I don't even care about the rest of this article. I just wanna see what a climate psychologist is here. A career in climate and environmental psychology. I guess, you know, I guess I could, the, the, when you read it like that, you kind of get a little bit of a spruce in your mind. Like, how do we get people to treat the earth better? It should just be called, like, don't be an asshole class or something, or how to train people not to be fucking... Do you see somebody throwing garbage on the floor? I'm sure that's what these climate psychologists are here to fix. Uh, the climate... Is, is there a Wikipedia about this? Climate psychology. Wikipedia. Is a field which aims to further our understanding of the psychological processes that occur in response to climate change, biodiversity loss, and the... So these people are just, like, studying people that get sad that trees are getting cut down sign me up baby it sounds like an easy job all right look hey bob i know you're feeling sad they uh chopped down a fuck ton more trees to so uh, they can make that money you're paying me with so you can sit in this chair and tell me about it it's very it's like a cycle you see don't worry about it we're all gonna die anyway my uh yeah, we'll see you next week on uh, 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 nick the rat radio i just had a brain fart this whole thing just made me fucking. I just. I think I might. I think I may be dying. I just had a stroke. I better go to the doctor. Anyway, I hope you guys had a great week. That interview was amazing. Uh, good work, uh, Nick. Good, good work, Chicky. You guys had a good time. That's that's cool. I heard that she actually did call up and has lawyers uh, saying don't release this episode because she's going to sue us. But uh, well, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, we got better lawyers than her, I'm sure. Anyway, this has been Zindu from the Dark Sewer News Network reporting to you live from uh, Nick the Rat Radio's Dark Sewer Network. Sewers. Oh, fuck. Is, is there a medication for strokes? I think I need it. I'm going to go jerk off in the mayo. We're not gonna pay. We're, no. Whatever she's asking, we're not gonna pay. And that's why I like to play uh, CC by 3.0 music on the uh, SoundCloud. That's where all this could all be found. We have Ikanoi with Sad Flute Song.
That was that was beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes everything is so beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I'm For like Letterman or somebody like that, it's real hard. You have to be really on the top of your game, as you know. You right, know, yeah. He's real so, funny. But the view, it's not that tough, you know, to keep up with. Right, sure. Uh, Star Jones or whatever, <laughs> uh, whoever they are. So, uh, Barbara Walters there, though. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's, she's tough to keep up with, right? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. So I'm <laughs> like, I, I, I'll, I'll be fine. That's what I kept telling the guy. So the guy's like, but that's their job, you know. So this guy would always have ideas. He would phone me with ideas. He'd go... I this goes on for weeks before the yeah, appearance, right? Yeah, weeks. It's yeah. almost like it becomes like work. It is. Talking to that guy is harder than talking to the host, you know? Yeah. And he's excited, and it's his job, so I don't want to... So he'd be like, ah, what if you came out in a red wig? I'm like, what the fuck? Why, why would I do that, right? <laughs> he's like, the gals have been teasing Barbara about, you know, tinging her hair. I'm like, no. Ah. Then, it'll look like my idea, and then I got a red wig on, and, you know. Right, right, yeah. You don't out. want to take part in their so, silliness. Just over and over, you know, every time. And he goes, well, do you have anything? I go, no, I can't think, but I'll think of something, you know. So he says, uh, he, well, anyways, one of the ones he finds me, he goes, I'll tell you what you do, man. He goes, you come out. He goes, you're talking to the, the, the gals, and all of a sudden, your cell phone rings, right? He goes, it's in the middle of the show. Like, he's really excited, right? He goes, you answer the cell phone. He goes, excuse me, ladies. He goes, we're not going to tell them about it. Uh -huh. And yeah. uh, the cell phone rings. He goes, excuse me, ladies. It's your agent, Morty. You know, he had this name. Right, 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 yeah. He goes, so you're like... <laughs> So you're like, Morty, you can't call me here. I'm on the everything. view. You know, I'm on TV. <laughs> right. What do you mean you have an offer for me? You know? uh -huh. And I had this crazy Jewish accent in the story. You know, uh -huh. What do you mean? I, I can't do it. I'm on the view. So uh, I'm like, ah, yeah. I didn't want to, you know, you don't want to hurt people's feelings, you know. So I'm like, no, that one's, yeah, it sounds pretty good, but maybe I'll think of something else, you know. Right. He was so excited. Yeah. So anyway. This is going to be a long story. No, no, it's fine. You know, we so, can we can actually stay on the air as long as we want. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I get that. So, anyways, I'm really late, right? Because I'm, uh, I'm I, I had a big hand at this uh, poker game. Right. So I you show up right before you yeah, gotta go on the air. Show up, you know, so I'm going. I go. Ah, I got the story about Bill Cosby. I'll do that. I know how to do that story. I did it before on Letterman, and it'll be fine. So I go in. and I tell the guy, "Listen, man, I do this story about Letterman." So uh, I walk out, you know. Now, unbeknownst to me, as I was walking out, this guy had muttered something. I hadn't slept for like three days. And he, he's, he's just the phone call, you know. So I go, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what he was talking about. But he had slipped like a cell phone. He t put a cell phone in my pocket. Oh. You know? So anyways, I got out there. And then... He uh, slipped a cell phone in your in pocket. pocket. Yeah, thinking I was in for this okay. gag, right? And it's all set to but ring. I forgot. You yeah, forgot about yeah, it. I forgot about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So, and all hell breaks loose. Yeah, so obviously. I go out to the, <laughs> so I go to the view, and the, those four bags are sitting there. You know? Oh come! On. So, no, ladies, yeah. women, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's not politically correct to say bags. No. But uh, was you know, Rosie wasn't Michael there. Richards is saying the N word. I yeah. can't say the B word. No, you can say that absolutely. I want to talk later about the. Now they have the F word for fag, which is really strange. Yeah. But, uh, the guy from Grey's Anatomy got in trouble for yeah, saying... Yeah, the N guy. The N word guy. <laughs> the F word. <laughs> no, but he was an N word guy. Wasn't he? I can't remember. That was the irony. Everybody's... everybody's no, he was African American. Everybody's going nuts out there. He was African American. Yeah. Said the F word. <laughs> he said the F word. If you were an African American, you know, if you were a racist, you would not say African American, maybe you'd say the A word. What's the A word? The African American. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, So I go on the, on the, okay, on the yeah. view... So this is what had happened to me a month previously. This was 19, whenever the first election was, the Bush, uh, <laughs> right. Bush against... Gore. Al Gore, yeah. yeah, the first time, right? I know nothing about politics, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, so 
Well, this is after, right after the election? This is before the election. Okay. Before the first election. So um, what happened was I got a call from this guy, uh, Ben Stein. You know that guy? Uh -huh, sure, yeah. 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 So he said, uh, he said, how would you like to meet uh, George Bush? He's running for president, you know? So I go, holy fuck, that would be cool, you know, meet a guy running for president. Maybe later he'll become president, uh -huh. and I'll be his buddy, because this is how naive I was, because uh -huh. I knew him like two months before he became president. Right. So in Hollywood, you know, obviously very liberal, right? So if like, so Gore showed up, and it was like Barbara Streisand and every giant star in Hollywood, right? Uh -huh. So uh, when Bush <laughs> plane came down, uh -huh. Literally, it was me and Ben Stein. We were the <laughs> we were the celebrities. Right, right, right. So, <laughs> it was really lame. And then when George Bush came out with his wife, he said to her, "See, I told you he'd come about me." Right, right. They were expecting right. maybe it would just be Ben, <laughs> ben Stein. They're really happy that two celebrities. Showed right, up, sure. You know, and real peripheral celebrities. So, uh, <laughs> but it was cool because everyone hates. George Bush and stuff, so I got to go on his airplane and talk to him. I really? talked to the guy for an hour. Got stuff. to hang out with him. Yeah, so it was really cool. You know, I don't know anything about politics, but it's cool to meet the guy that's going to be might be the president. You yeah. Know? So, anyways, what I, did I, you what did you talk to Bush about on I, this plane? I, 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 I talked to him about well, I don't know shit about politics, but he didn't know much either. <laughs> he hadn't he hadn't really been elected yet. No, he, he hadn't been elected and everything, and. Uh, I told I told him some jokes, uh -huh. and uh, he he sometimes he'd go like, "There's my you know mics or something like that." Yeah, it's not very interesting stuff. Right, that's cool. But when it, so not, see, it's a mini. Well, this guy's been just sitting here I listening know, to I the know. whole story. That's why we I haven't even introduced story. ourselves to him yet. What's your name? My name is David. Where are you? I'm just outside Montreal. Montreal. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, so you're about to walk out. Yeah, so I go on the view, right? Yeah. And I'm supposed to talk. I said, I'll talk about the Bill Cosby story, you know? So, anyways, the, the lady from the view goes, take a look at this picture. And there's show a picture of me standing beside uh, presidential nominee George Bush. Uh -huh. And then they're like, You're on what? the view now. Yeah, I'm on yeah. the view. And, and they're like, What's going on here? That's what the lady says to me, one of the ladies, right? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Like it was a fucking Which was it, Star of, Jones, uh, Meredith Vieira? Who was the uh, fat black one? Uh, well, S Star Jones was left the show, though. She's there was not a on there fat African-American. Star lady. Jones, I yeah. think, yeah. That was the she lady. lost a lot of weight later, too. Yeah, yeah. It was big. <laughs> there was a big brouhaha over there. Was there? Yeah, but, yeah, so she asked you that. So she's like, what's going on here, right? And it's just a picture of me with a guy running for the president. But the way they said it, it was like... It was like that picture of Kurt Valtime with Hitler in the fucking woods, right? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Like, what's wrong with this, right? So, uh, just to be crazy, kind of, like, uh, j and just because they got it got under my skin. Uh -huh. I don't know nothing about politics and nothing. I said, well, it's better than that guy that's that's in there now. That, that guy murdered a guy, Bill Clinton, right? Right, right, and right. And then they like, get, what? And I go, they, they go, what do you, what do you, what? So I go, he murdered a guy, remember? Some guy killed him, because I remember somebody died. Right, sure, yeah. Someone went committed suicide. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. And, and I heard a crazy conspiracy thing that uh -huh. killed him. So, so you I'm just like, start, yeah. I'm like, he killed, don't you remember that? You know, but I'm acting like everybody knows it. Uh -huh, like, uh -huh. I'm just acting like a retard. Uh -huh. And then uh, <laughs> Barbara Walter goes, you're, right, you're, you're walking a pretty thin line, mister. And I'm like, I thought it was a matter of public record. Barbara, you're a newswoman. Back me up, you know. <laughs> it kept going on and on, and it was like, fucking, you know. And she kept. She, uh, I remember she kept going like, "You're one piece of work, Mister." Like getting really, really, like, really crazy, taking you seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not and remembering like, that, like, uh, that, you know, uh, the comedian, the jokes on shit, yeah. Weekend Update were. <laughs> so yeah. I just did it to be like, so, stupid, and then so there's just like. You know, the audience like, uh, like confused, you know, and uh, the ladies are all angry. All of a sudden, I hear like coming out of the, the thing, like, ding, ding, like, like it's a fucking fire alarm or something. What the fuck is that? And then I remember it's my f phone, you know, my cell phone, this uh -huh. joke. Oh, yeah. The producer backstage saw that everything was going to hell <laughs> and decided to uh, fix it, you know. So I, I go, oh, yeah, oh. I go, Marty, Marty, man, this is a bad time to call because all the ladies hate me now and stuff like that. You know? And uh, Barbara Walters goes, what the hell are you doing? Like, she's just 
Right. I go, nah, I know I'm a little scared. I go, I don't know. The guy backstage, he told me that it would be funny if I pretended my Agent Morty called. And then there was like about five seconds of silence. And Barbara Walters said, we'll be right back. And then she uh, gave me the boot. That is on YouTube right now? That's on YouTube right now, apparently, Bill. Yeah. Have you queued it up? No, I don't have it. Oh, you don't have it? We should, we should try to find that. Oh, my, that's, a, that's uncomfortable, huh? Have you been asked back? <laughs> no. No? I thought it was fun. Oh, yeah, no, that's awesome. <laughs> you, you love those uncomfortable moments, though, right? I, I, I like it, yeah. Like with stand-up, if I bomb, I really, really like that. Yeah? Yeah. Do you ever get like that? Oh, yeah, all the time. Every night here. Okay. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he took it, he gave it to the brothers. No, he, he took it and he broke it and said, Here's my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. There is no planet B. There is no planet blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. This is not about some expensive, politically correct, green act with bunny hugging or blah, blah, blah. Build back better. Blah, blah, blah. Green economy. Blah, blah, blah. Net zero by 20. Blah, 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 net zero, blah, 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 climate neutral, blah, blah, blah. This is all we hear from our so-called leaders. Words. Words that sound great, but so far has led to no action. Our hopes and dreams drown in their empty words and promises. Of course, we need constructive dialogue, but they've now had 30 years of blah, 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 and where has that left? What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? Now, when I say, can you please delete all your social media accounts, surely one of the first thoughts in all your minds is, well, that's ridiculous. I mean, you're not going to get billions of people to suddenly drop these things. There's, there's two reasons why you're correct if you have that, <laughs> that, uh, it, that, that, that thought. One is that you're addicted. This is an actual addiction. You can't just go to somebody with a gambling addiction and say, oh, just say no any more than you can do that if they have a heroin addiction. 
that's not how addiction works. You can't just say no. It's a pro it's hard. Addiction's hard. All of us have addictions. None of us are perfect. But this particular one's destroying our future. It's really bad. It's not just personal. We hurt each other with this one in an exceptional way. So um, another reason is network effect. And that means everybody already has like all their pictures and all their past and all their stuff on these properties that belong to companies like Facebook. And for everybody to get off it all at once so they can continue to have connections with each other is a coordination problem that's essentially impossible at scale. So that's, that's a network effect problem. So why am I asking people to do something that can only happen a little? And the reason why is even if it only happens a little, it's incredibly important. So let me, let me draw a metaphor to some things that have happened in the past. For a long time trying to open a safe. And some Joe comes along who hasn't, doesn't know anything about what you're doing or anything except that you're trying to open a safe. He says, you know, why don't you try the combination 10, 20, 30? Because you're busy, you're trying a lot of things. Maybe you already tried 10, 20, 30. Maybe you know that the middle number is already 32 and not 20. Maybe you know that, as a matter of fact, this is a five-digit combination. Maybe have <laughs> so these letters don't do any good, and so please don't send me any letters trying to tell me how the thing is going to work. I, don't, I read them to make sure <laughs> that I haven't already thought of that. But it takes too long to answer them because I usually in the class try 10, 20, 30. Really? You're still here? It's almost three in the morning. What do you... We should... Go to, go to bed. Go lay down. There's a, there's a mattress. Oh, are you playing... Are you playing video games right now? Or... What are you... Eating sugar? What are you doing? Go, go lay down. Stop being so active. Relax. Come on, do that for... Do that for everybody. Just... Take a, take a step back and relax. That's all That's all. Think the Rat wants. All right, we're going to be back next week with more Nick the Rat Radio. We're getting the hell out of here. It's... <sighs> that burp was like a two. It's late. We're going to be back next week with more Nick the Rat. Uh, thank you once again to Cheeky Hot. Thank you to all of Sewer Chat. Thank you to the donators. Thank you to... Uh, oh, that was like a four. Thank you to go podcasting. Uh, we got one more song here, and then the show is over. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. We got... I can't even fucking read that. Edge of 17 by Par Par Paradox Music Rocks. Paradox Music Rocks. That's just 17. Oh, Chicky, Chicky was hanging out the whole time, too, in the chat. Just like the wailing dove sing song sounds like she's singing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just
Sings like the wild wing dove Sings songs, sounds like she's singing Ooh, baby, ooh, said ooh And the days go by Like a train in the wind In the way that is my own I begin again Said to my friend Nothing else matters No more than a baby then. Well, he seemed broken hearted. Something within him. But the moment that I first laid eyes on him all alone on the edge of. Sweet dreams, Chicky. Ducky, this is a cover.
happy. Maybe you should work on the Dracula musical. It, it, look, you've been working on it for a while. It'll help your mind. Be creative. Think about you. You need to fuck somebody. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're not my stepbrother anymore. You're, you're a step stranger. Why are you talking like that? Brian. You don't need to put your P in a V right now. No, I don't. I need to B my L on somebody's T's. That's disgusting. You don't need to be doing that. And if anything, you should leave your P in the V and blow it inside the V so you can have a B-A-B-Y. No, 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 no.